in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah five minutes to joseph becoming the prime minister he still didn't know he didn't know what he had held on to was walking although he was in the prison he was walking i'm on my way on my way i'm on my way to better day up your voice in one minute and say lord i will be consistent i will hold on to this i will hold on to this from the depth of my heart and with everything i've got go ahead and pray it may not look like it now but there is no giving up there is no giving up the bible says in the end it will speak it's already speaking in the lives of many people surely there is an end the bible says and thy expectation shall not be cut short hallelujah please be seated god bless you god bless you refuse to allow the devil minister lies to you listen refuse to allow the devil use your current situations please hear me i'm ministering to you already refuse to allow the devil use the fact that you have not eaten this morning refuse to allow the devil use the fact that your rent is more than expired and they're about to throw you away refuse to allow the fact that there is a carryover before you or there is no job all those things are the devil's schemings to manipulate your faith and cheat you and deceive you into thinking the world is not working i assure you the devil is a liar he didn't just become a liar tonight he's always been that way there is a track record of him losing over the lives of those who trust god are we together every time you see people rejoicing you know most times we think people are rejoicing just because they have everything in place no they are rejoicing because they are believers believers of what believers of the word of god the truths written therein people are not just rejoicing because they have everything intact make no mistakes when you see people rejoicing they are rejoicing because they already know the end are we together yes there is a level of certainty and confidence that comes upon your life when you already know what the end will be it may not look like it but there is a god that can change can change lives hallelujah allow those who are laughing at you to continue laughing at you they need to laugh at you because one day they will be forced to swallow their words is it not the god of heaven we are serving are we together be courageous listen i want to strengthen before we start off tonight i want to strengthen your conviction it's called persuasion get to a point where you no longer need people to strengthen you and say look don't give up uh -uh. you must learn to prophesy to yourself and say i know this thing works and if it will take me 10 years i know god is faithful are we together i rather apologize to the world at the end of my life and tell them i believe they lie than to quit just because of some 
mediocres flying around carrying their own history of unbelief and rubbing it off on me to make it look like God is not faithful. God is faithful. Say it, God is faithful. Say it again, God is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I want to challenge you very seriously tonight. Um, what I'm about to share will change our lives. As we know, this year for us has been very strategic, not only because of the prophetic word that is our year of multiplied grace and influence, but I decided to dedicate this year by the leading of the Holy Spirit to really settle down and teach us the principles that produce results in this kingdom. Hallelujah. If you follow through with all our teachings, except for maybe even during miracle service, all the teachings have been very strategic. I, I really want to, the, the goal is not to impress us. The goal is to really imprint something upon our spirits. And we have been all together laboring in the world to search the principles. And um, one of the things that God has helped me to do, especially in life and ministry, is he has helped me by his spirit to really lay my hands on the things that work in this kingdom. And trust me, I've explored all kinds of things. I have studied, I study a lot, I, and I'm very open-hearted towards the body of Christ. And so it has given me an advantage to be able to examine different perspectives. I have studied the thoughts of many denominations, ministries, individuals, and um, I have also studied people who have been able to do so much for the kingdom. And the goal of that entire research is to attempt to reduce the laws of the kingdom to the ones that work there are many principles that do not work are we together in fact they are not even principles at all they are just opinions of people taught over a long period of time and in loyalty to those who taught them they have been accepted as principles but they were never principles in the first place because principles do not have exceptions they always work are we together and so i've been sharing with us the things that really matter as far as our success is concerned. I know that many of us are all of a sudden coming into the awareness because we're beginning to see some results in our lives or in the lives of others. Let me tell you something about man. Man as we know, human beings. They hardly believe truth until it's almost too late. Are we together? Results speak in the end. So if you wait for results to believe truths, you will believe too late. Are we together? Yeah. The Bible spoke about ten virgins. Five of them, the Bible says, were wise. And five were foolish. They were all virgins. So what made the other five foolish? They were waiting until they had the masters coming to verify that he was coming then they'll quickly get lamps the others say he gave us a word and we know he does not fail so they went to get extra oil let me tell you something what i am teaching us right now many of us five ten years from now you will get the same message and you will cry that you've had it in your laptop and with you for years you know why because when you see the results that will be in our lives and the life of all who believe it you will wonder why it never manifested in your life. Then you will run to seek answers. You will pay for seminars, pay to travel abroad, and everything, almost everything you will be taught, you will find out that you had access to it years ago, but you didn't believe it. Are we together? You see, to be carnally minded, the Bible says it's death. But to be spiritually minded, it says it's life and peace. To be carnally minded... That means ruled sensually. If someone tells you, for instance, tithing is the way God opens doors for people, you can argue it because you are seeing the person with 700 naira trouser, 300 naira shirt, and one rubber watch for 200 naira, and say, if, you, if it's working, it should work for you. And all of a sudden, in one day, you see that person change, and you say, what did you even say is the secret of wealth? And he says, I've told you before. 
do not be part of those who will regret these truths the things you hear me teach are only discoveries they are not inventions they've always been there it says ask for the ancient parts are we together so cultivate a habit of believing the truth when it is taught i love you too much to mislead you if you cannot trust that the truths i'm teaching you will open you up now let me tell you something and i say this with every sense of apology many of us have loved ones and sincere people in our circles of influence who will listen to these truths that are being taught and will trivialize it and they will encourage you to trivialize it i don't mind them they don't know it's because they are enjoying that's why they don't know what you are passing through and then it becomes very bad if you believe it and say it's true it's true should be apostle has eaten that's why he's talking like this me have i eaten if you develop that attitude of cynicism it's better not to come here because you will waste your time the bible says they had the word listen to me just like we did huh but it says the word did not profit them why not because the word was not powerful it says not be mixed with faith in them that had it brothers and sisters i give you a guarantee with my life if you believe these things i'm teaching you you will rise to a point they would think you are using charm just believe these truths even if you don't understand it believe it and trust the holy spirit to help you you've got to believe something in your life and you've got to believe someone you can't argue with everybody for some of us every man of god has problems are we together how are we sure that this thing there must be more they are just hiding the one that is the main one and just said no this is it it says that which i tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top i believe in prayers i believe in prophecy but i believe the greatest way to strengthen people and give them confidence is to open them to the the working knowledge the revelations the mysteries like benga shared that will hold you so that you don't just have to run and look for apostle and say ah if he's not around what happens to you then you die no you can hold on to these principles because i assure you the world system is not going to get any better if you are trusting the world stop wasting your time the bible says for darkness shall cover the earth he says and gross darkness the people amen we've inherited too much nonsense from our loved ones and god is changing us god is lifting us you see and the beautiful thing and i thank god and i pray that it remains a signature of this ministry and my life is one word balance everybody say balance, balance. i think sadly over 90 percent of well-meaning preachers this is where the devil cheats them imbalance one of the things the lord taught me as a secret to a very remarkable ministry is balance there are so many men and women of god scattered around this nation scattered around the nations of the world anointed people great people but where the devil cheats people is when he he pushes you to a point of imbalance and you stop there and then you are not open to the other dimensions of the kingdom by the grace of god what you will get in koinonia is a balanced diet are we together we will not teach you on prayer and throw away prosperity we will not make you rich and make you foolish the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them so we will not make you wealthy from a carnal standpoint no why choose a few when all of them were meant for you are we together so that imbalance of choosing a dimension me i choose prayer me i choose the holy spirit me i choose power me i choose money this one will say me i choose relationship me i choose job and employment me i choose education no they are all different sides of the same reality that imbalance if you are a pastor here make sure you don't jump into just throwing away truths because you do not understand agreed 
there are perspectives dimensions that god reveals to us every man of god cannot do everything and you must admit it and in admitting it open up to the members so that they can open up themselves to the areas you do not have don't trivialize what is not working in your life that's what most pastors do poor pastors tell you just focus on god and forget about prosperity rich pastors say it's not all about prayer 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 and the you know all these 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 imbalances end up making people weak we mock ourselves the key is to handle the keys of the kingdom the bible says and i will give you the keys say keys not just a key and i've told you again and again and i will repeat it here you cannot take one truth in the kingdom and expect it to cover for another one you do not know prayer for instance will not cover for tithing tithing will not cover for prayer are we together yeah character will not cover for lack of anointing i'm a good person it will not raise anybody from the wheelchair you still need to be anointed and the anointing will not cover for lack of character are we together all these are components in the kingdom designed to make the believer complete it is for this purpose the bible says in ephesians 4 from verse 10 that he gave on to some apostles and prophets right and evangelists and and pastors and teachers why for the equipping the perfecting the maturing of the saints that the saints being matured will now do the work of the ministry that all of us together as a family will come into what the bible calls the unity of faith right into the perfect man the fullness of the measure of the stature of christ we become so matured we are not tossed to and fro just by any wind of doctrine and the slight of men so you are receiving something that is a sure foundation you are not receiving something you will cancel away after 10 years there are people who have gone ahead of us they have made the mistakes and they were honest enough to show us the scars they said look when you get to this point don't waste your time going around there is a door you can easily follow and it is from their scars that we have been able to summarize the truths that we teach the mistakes we have now made we will further fine-tune it and pass it to our children and say although i got it well in this area i made a mistake so when you get here pay attention so we expect our children to be better than us are we together yeah but when you now make the mistake of your forefathers you are you are really kind you are you are making it it, 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 it then becomes very bad they've made the mistakes correct it that's why i have very sincere honor for our elderly ones who sit down here and they are listening many of them as they hear these truths they wonder ah, i wish i knew this 20 years ago i wish i knew this 30 years ago don't be like that that when you are 50 or 60 or 70 you now say i wish i knew this just 10 years earlier hallelujah praise the lord amen and amen so you'll be hearing one of those mysteries again tonight that will bless and lift us when the lord put this in my heart um it's one of those teachings that i have to pray for myself before coming here remarkable and it will change our lives how many of us want results in our lives let me see your hands truly are we together god bless you we don't serve god we don't love him and we don't seek his presence just for results how be it in the kingdom the consolation to your christian experience is that sooner or later there be evidences that become testaments of the fact that what you believe is true the end of faith is a manifestation jesus caused the fig tree because sufficient time had been given to it to produce and it was taken from the soil and not producing anything and so jesus caused the fig tree hallelujah praise the lord lord bless us tonight change our hearts in the name of jesus say after me in the name of jesus my heart is open i'm a receiver the word of god will bless me it will change me it will set me apart in the name of jesus
Tonight I'm teaching on the subject of love. And I will be showing us how walking in the love of God is a key that will grant you access to every other thing in the kingdom. Are we together? Now please, don't, don't trivialize what I'm sharing. Generally speaking, in the body of Christ, every time we talk of love, we give it a very feminine um, expression. Whenever we talk of faith, it looks masculine because faith requires forcing mountains to fall. The mountain, if there is no way you bulldoze it, you call it breakthrough. And people say faith. So every time we say faith, the men square up and say, this is us. I mean, it's like a gym. Faith. When we talk of love, they just shut down and say, let's, let's allow the ladies catch up with love. But then you will be learning from tonight that the most powerful force on earth is love. I want to show you a key that will render Satan helpless. A key that will turn every challenge in your life to victory. A very powerful mystery. For many years, in fact, my name even means that. Selman means the way to love. But I've studied so much about love, but it was only in recent times God began to open me up and show me the depth, the riches, the unfathomable dimensions, the advantage a man can have over situations and circumstances when we walk in love. Say amen. amen. The subject of love is one that, psychologically speaking, is a very nice subject that we love because every time we talk of love it gives us an idea of peace an idea of joy an idea of serenity and um, nobody wants to live in an environment where there is no love we have all kinds of definitions and ideas when i mention love to many of us we mean affection to many of us we mean sacrifice to many of us we mean god to many of us we mean brotherly kindness and a sense of benevolence and brotherhood but I'm going to be guiding us towards a common thought. I want us to really examine it from the perspective that I'll be revealing to us. Praise the Lord. Very, very, very important. There are many things the Bible has to say about love. Scattered from Genesis to Revelation, especially in the epistles. The gospels and the epistles contain the highest thoughts on love. Jesus himself speaking about it. And then Apostle Paul admonishing the churches about love especially the church in corinth apostle john to john the beloved spoke a lot in his epistles about love and and there are so many things that the bible says about love but then i want us to consider three very important things that the bible has to say about love praise the lord this message will bless you tonight the first thing the bible lets us know is that god is love say after me god is love Shout it one more time. God is love. It's very interesting because the Bible does not say God has love. It doesn't say God possesses love. It says God is love. Hallelujah. The first point that I want you to know tonight is that God is love. And the meaning of that is that the measure of your love life is also the measure of god that is finding expression in you the measure of your love life is the exact measure of god that is finding expression in you and through you to others god is love absolutely important first john chapter 4 please help us first john chapter 4 verse 8 we're going to look at um four verses we'll look at verse 8 verse 16 and then 20 and 21. first john chapter 4 let's look at the epistle of john chapter 4 from verse 8 then we'll jump to 16 and then 20 and then 21. everyone please read is projected one to read he that loveth not knoweth not god uh-huh for god 
is love. Let's just hold on here. It's, it's very, very instructive. It says, he that cannot love, no matter how he claims to know God, he does not know God. Are we together? Your knowledge of God is not even measured by how much revelation you have. Listen, your knowledge of God is not measured by how much Greek and Hebrew words. The apostle, and you know, John understood what he was saying because he was the apostle of love. The beloved. Are we together? And here John is saying, if you want to know your measure, the measure to which you truly know God, you don't check it by how much theological accolades you have or how much wheelchairs you've been able to lift up. He says the true measure of your knowledge of God is love. Love. He says for God is love. Let's look at verse 16. Shabakatapaya. Verse 16. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, does what? Dwells in God. And God in him. Now please follow me very carefully. The Bible says, whoever dwells in love. It doesn't just say whoever loves. Whoever dwells in that realm. Where you cannot but love. It says he dwells in God and God dwells in him. Are we together? Verse 20 and 21. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother. What is the verdict? Read it yourself. So if Joshua Selman says, I love God and hated his brother joshua selman is a liar no matter how impolite it sounds that's the truth of god's word if you say i love god whether as a man of god as a young man as an old person as a parent whatever you are he says if a man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar he says for he that loveth not his brother whom he can see are we together? It says, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. 21. Okay, that, that's, that's it there. It says, he who loveth God should do what? Love his brother also. Let me tell you something. I think this is probably one area where Satan has cheated believers more than anything. There have been areas where we have allowed Satan to take advantage, maybe in refusing to open up ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, in creating a lot of imbalance like I taught earlier. But I think the chiefest of the tools that Satan has used to destroy us is this understanding of God's idea and the relevance and the necessity to love one another. In fact, Jesus said this. He says, by this shall all men, regardless of who they are, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. He says, when you have love one for another. Not when you pray in tongues. Not when you heal the sick. By this this very act is the ultimate test that the love of God dwells in you when you have love one for another. Are we together? So the measure of your knowledge of God, the measure of your intimacy with God is the measure of the love you have. Not just for him, but your fellow people. Never tell me you love God when you hate men never tell me you love god when you love only those who like you never tell me you love god you know the interesting thing about it is god does not tell us the kinds of people to love he tells us to love all men it is absolutely logical to love those who matter to you it is absolutely logical to love those who you benefit from but the bible's idea of love is that the closer you get to god please hear me 
all your praying in tongues, all your fasting, all your spiritual activity are like different channels headed to the same point to get you to that point where you grow and you are established experientially in the love of God. Are we together? So the first revelation is that love the measure of your knowledge of God is a measure of your love for people. There are very few Christians who really love people. There are many Christians who love power. There are many Christians who love ministry. There are many Christians who love ladies who they want to marry. Are we together? There are many people who love their business partners. There are many people who love their parents or their relatives. I'm not talking about any of those. I'm talking about living in a realm where nothing else can find expression in you outside of love. Some of us have so dwelled in hate, we do not even know such a realm is possible. And if possible, are there people living in such a reality today? Are we together? That's the first revelation that we need to have. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God. Nobody can say I love God and hate his brother and hate his sister regardless of what the justification for the hatred is. The Bible says he that does not love his brother does not love God. It's as simple as that. The second thing I want you to know tonight is that the Bible calls love a more excellent way. Hmm. It calls love a more excellent way. There are excellent ways. And the Bible shows us many remarkable things that a believer can do in this kingdom. Give us 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read from, we'll read verse 31 and then we'll read chapter 13, verse 13. Chapter 12, 31 and then 13, verse 13. While they attempt to pull this up, okay, it's up, it's up already. Watch this. I hope you know theologically speaking that the church in Corinth, um, they were the believers who opened us up to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Are we together? Yeah. In fact, they did not even know that what was happening to them was called prophecy or word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Are we together? Or discerning of spirits. There was such an outpouring of the power of the Holy Ghost upon that church. People were prophesying. Manifold possibilities manifesting from people. To a point that it was even bringing chaos. You can imagine a church where the usher is as powerful enough to be called a bishop. Prophecies, healings, miracles. Paul had to come and observe what was happening. And then by his apostolic grace began to write and guide them. And say, look, 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 look. Let me classify this and help you know that this and that and that and that. And the interesting thing is that after Paul teaches them about what we all covet... The gift of the spirit. We read books by Smith Wigglesworth. We read God's generals. Are we together? We run helter skelter searching for men and apostles and prophets and great people. To impart upon us fresh fire as we call it. So that we can do great things for the kingdom. But hear what the Bible says. After Paul gives them the whole exegesis of the workings of the spirit. He says, but covet what? earnestly passionately desperately the best gifts and then he tells them i want to show you something he says and yet even when you have what you call the best gifts i show you a more excellent way are we together now paul is telling them look guys i know that have you seen people arguing let's say people arguing uh, in primary school, maybe on a mathematical problem, and they are coming to say, no, 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 no. One minus one 
is it cannot. Our teacher taught us, and you are trying to correct the person, but you know that even that knowledge itself is limited. Because if the person goes higher, he will learn that there's something called number line. Are we together? At that level, he may not know that such a reality exists. So if he writes my, one minus two, he will write it cannot, and you will mark him correct. Paul says, compared to what I want to show you, even this gift of the spirit thing that you are arguing with, if I show you this higher thing, you will almost throw away the gifts to embrace what I'm about to show you. He says, yet I show you a more excellent way. Let's read 13 verse 1 before we go to verse 13. Just give us verse 1, media, then we'll go to verse 13. 13 verse 1. Everyone read, please. One, to read. And have not, well, the word charity, there's the word love. I am become what? As a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Listen. The Bible says, though I speak with the tongues of men, utterance, you get to a point where you are such, you are such an orator. You can communicate in every language. You can communicate intellectually. And it says, even the tongues of angels, access to communications, utterances that are not of the earth. It says, as powerful as that is, there is no man on earth who has attained this state. But it says, even if you get to this state, and you do not have love. From God's perspective, it says you are like a clinging symbol. Let's read verse 2. Maybe we'll read it down to verse 3 and then we'll jump to verse 13. Verse 2. 13 verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy, our generation is looking for this desperately. Because this looks like the, the Sabbath day of ministry. When you get into the realm where you can prophesy. No matter what you know about finances or not, you'll be rich. No matter how organized, excellent, or the excellent you are, the prophetic will seem to cover up everything. So this is what we all look for. We fast and pray for it. I can't tell you how many people... Um, I remember a gentleman sending me a text some months ago and said, man of God. No, no, no. He said, uh, my father, my father, open my eyes. I said, I'm not a herbalist. I remember the text. I mean, I think it was after one miracle service. He said, open my eyes, you know. <laughs> you can imagine I receive all kinds of things from people but it says even if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries the things we are talking about and all knowledge and though I have all faith no man has attained this realm so that I could remove mountains Ah, it says but if I do not have love what are you? Now, when God speaks, it's important to listen. When God tells you you are nothing, just because you do not have love, pay attention to it. We all want to be something, and God is showing us how to be something. He's saying these things you are seeking, they are only relevant when you have love. If you do not have love in the realm of the spirit, you are not small, you are nothing. Nothing in mathematics is zero. Correct? Zero plus anything is equal to that thing. Zero doesn't add to anything. Are we together? Zero times anything reduces it to zero. And it says, if I have all these great things, but have no love, I am nothing. Let's go to verse 13. Hmm. It says, and now abided what? faith the faith that moves mountains the hope that maketh not ashamed and the bible says love replace the word charity with love it says these three are important for the relevance of a man but it says the greatest of these is what love don't say charity love the greatest of these is love the bible says for without faith it is impossible to please god Yet he says, even with it, God is more pleased with a man if you are walking in love. And I'm not talking about loving God today. Many people do already. I'm talking of loving your neighbor, loving your fellow man. A subtle but powerful key that is responsible for the manifestation of God's possibilities in men. Love is the more excellent way. The Bible says this. Love 
is the more excellent way. The third thing I want to share with us tonight about love that has blessed me so much is in 1 Corinthians 13, same chapter, verse 8. And I pray that this revelation will bless you the way it has blessed me. Love never fails. Love never fails. Please look up everybody the first three words. One, two, read. Love never fails. Look up. When was the last time they taught you about love as part of the keys that can give you a fail-proof destiny? Whenever they are teaching you about fail-proof things, they teach you that tithing is a fail-proof key. Are we together? But nobody seems to talk about love. Yet, the Bible, look, even faith can fail. I hope you know. Faith can fail. Jesus himself revealed to us that faith can fail. He said, get deep behind me, Peter. Satan. And he says, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. He says, and when thou art converted... When you return back to faith, strengthen your brethren. Teach them that their faith can fail and that it is prayer that keeps faith alive. When you are converted, when my prayer works for you and you come back in faith, observe this and teach your brethren that Satan can attempt to sift them like wheat. Yet, the apostle speaking by the spirit says, love never fails. I show you a key that will empower you to never fail in life. If you walk in love and you love men, I guarantee you, you will never fail. If you are walking in love and you see something before you that looks like failure, keep watching it. Something is about to happen there. Love is a miracle that can turn everything around. Love never fails. Love never fails. If I do business in love, it will never fail. Marriage in love never fails. A believer that works in love never fails. There is something about love not that you cannot fail you can fail but the love component will make you not to fail it will correct everything and make you succeed love never fails there are so many people who want crowds pastors want crowds they admire men of god with so many crowds but they do not have the love component that authorizes God to bless them with such congregations. Oftentimes we want to use people just for our self-centered, egocentric lifestyle so that it will be on record that this man of God is not a small person. But then the love for them is not there. I'm not talking of love for God. I know we've settled that already. By the grace of God, this is a house where we love God. But I'm talking of love for one another. And every other person a powerful key some of the most offended people and loveless people on earth are men of God and Christians they love God because they do not have a choice but I'm talking of love for your fellow man are we together listen to this and paralyze the hands of Satan over your life When I was preparing for this message, the Lord asked me to speak on the one key that takes away love from people. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. We will dwell, most of our teaching will dwell on what I'm talking about. It's called the spirit of offense. Write it down. We're going to discuss the subject of offense extensively. And you will see why for many of us it's almost impossible for us to walk in love. Everybody say after me, the spirit of offense. There is a spirit, look up please. 
there is a spirit, an operation of darkness that comes upon men and makes it difficult, if not impossible, for them to have love towards one another. And the Bible meticulously teaches on it. It's called offense. Are we together? The spirit of offense. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 9 and 10. Shabakato superataya. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. It's projected as loud as you can. One to read. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and all discernment. Uh huh. That you may approve the things that are excellent. Read on. And without offense. How long? Till the day of Christ. God says that it is my prayer, the apostle praying, that your love will grow higher and higher while your offense diminishes until there is no more offense in you. Are we together? Offense is a terrible spirit. It's worse, it's worse than occultism. The word offense comes from the Greek word scandalizo. I want you to learn it. S-K-A-N-D-A-L-I-Z-O. Scandalizo. That's where the word offense comes from. And it means, very interesting when I was studying this, it means a trap. It means a snare. The word offense from the Greek rendition. The verb is scandalizo. And it means a trap. It means a snare. Are we together? So, a man that is living in offense is like a rat that has been trapped. You are in a snare. You are in a trap. You are unable to move forward. You are unable to make a lasting impact. You destroy your health. You destroy your life. And God cannot manifest his possibilities through you. Let's define offense. We are talking about love. What is offense? The root cause of lack of love among brethren, believers, people in any society is offense. What is offense? Write this down, please. Offense is an emotional state. Offense is an emotional state or response. An emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, comma, hurt, anger, and outrage. Let me take it again and I'll continue. Don't put a full stop afterwards. Offense is an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, hurt, Anger and outrage, right on, usually caused by the words and actions of people. Offense is an emotional state or response resulting from displeasure, hurt, anger, and outrage, usually caused by the words and the action of people. Are we together? So offense is the name given to the emotional feeling. The emotional state that a person is left at. Are we together? By reason of displeasure. The moment there is displeasure. The moment there is hurt. The moment there is anger. The moment there is outrage. That state leaves you in a state the Bible calls offense. Are we together? Let me tell you a few very interesting things I've discovered about offense. Both being... Uh, let me have two gentlemen. Oga Jordan, come. Promise, come. Just stand, both of you. One here, one here. Thank you, guys. Anybody. Just stand, one of you here. Watch this. 
If promise, listen, if promise offends Jordan, are we together? And Jordan gets very offended. Both promise the offender and Jordan the offended are both affected because the same thing is happening to them. I will tell you, both, write this down, being offensive and being offended has the same root. And that root is self. Both being offensive and being offended comes from the same root. They are twins. Self. Our self-worth. Our self-esteem. And sometimes our self-centeredness. Write it down. Both I mean, being offensive and being offended has the same root, self. What about the self? Our self-worth, we are offended because we think our self-worth has been abused. We are offended because we think our self-esteem has been insulted. And then, most times, we are offended because we are self-centered. Ah, you will be blessed tonight. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Are we together? So, Jordan is here. Watch this. As a person, he has his what we call ego. Are we together? Jordan has his ego. Jordan has his sense of self-worth. He believes he's not a small man. He's not a small child. And he's, he's trying to protect his fragile ego. His fragile, uh, uh, what do we call it now? His fragile um, self-esteem. And here comes promise. And promise seems to disregard his self-esteem. Let me tell you something. Most times, people offend us because of the frustration they feel as a result of their own low self-esteem. So they respond to it by creating pain for another. So that, you see, he said misery likes company. Are we together? When people feel miserable, they get, why are you smiling? What is it about the smiling? Am I looking like a clown? You see, the person usually is fighting something. There is an internal conflict. It just so happens that mistakenly you were the scapegoat that gave that internal conflict expression. So it looks like you were the troublemaker, but it's not. Are we together? A father has been insulted from his office. They told him, Mr. Man, you have been underproductive and we cannot even believe that you are a master's holder. Did you buy this thing or did you really go to school? And he comes back with that anger. Are we together? And the tire of his car goes down and his little son is the scapegoat at that moment who will give that anger expression. And he says, you mean you didn't see this? You, you didn't see this? And he starts slapping the boy. And you know that that offense, listen, it was never about tire. It was about a man whose ego had been insulted and he was looking for a prey to vent it out. And it so happened that that young boy was the scapegoat, the helpless scapegoat who gave that offense expression. Are we together? Yeah. Have you seen people who get angry and are talking and ranting and shouting at you and at a point you say, calm down. What exactly is the problem? I don't even know honestly. I don't know again. Because the, it was not constructive. It was a rambling, like going around circles, a venting of anger. And then they cry. Usually when they cry, they now calm down. And you say, what exactly is the problem? You say, see, my family, things are not going right. But you just told me I ate your food. So it was never about the food. It was a bad news that collided with food issue to find expression. Listen, both being offensive and being offended all come from the same root self learn this i learned this and it delivered me 
Are we together? Self. If I think I'm a man of God, great man of God, Joshua Selman, and all of a sudden jo Jordan comes and seems to trivialize, trivialize my ego, I now turn and say, Jordan, do you know that, do you know that I'm not a small person at all? You see that? Jordan may trivialize me because he feels by doing that, he will reduce me and then feel high. And me, I'm trying to fight him to say, no, no matter what you do, I'm the boss here. Are we together? Yeah. Listen, learn this key and you will watch yourself rise. You will, you will look like a spirit walking upon the earth. Let me tell you something. We are largely self-centered people. You can call it selfish. This is an uncomfortable truth, but if you listen to it and your heart is open, God will help you and deliver you tonight. Are we together? We are largely self-centered. So every time things are not done, the foundation of offense is disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you are angry. You are resentful. I expected this guy to come and tell me thank you. Jordan, that was nothing. I borrowed you 200,000. Now you have become a millionaire and you are looking at me as if we are mates, Abby. Disappointed expectations. Are we together? This guy has been roaming around me. He's not saying anything. He's blocking others from seeing well and he himself is not saying anything. I'm going to confront him today and say, bros, what is it? If you are not doing anything, get disappointed expectations. I helped this person. We did this business together. In my mind, I was thinking it's chop by chop and now he has left me. Offense. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you stand a chance to be offended. It is not unusual for offense to come. In fact, in Luke, I think at Luke 17, I hope I'm right. Give us Luke 17 verse 1. I think Jesus said something there. That offense will always come. Luke 17. You can sit down guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aha, I'm right. Go ahead and read it. One to read. He said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come. Stop there. Jesus himself is saying, Look, for as long as you are walking upon this earth, the opportunities for offense will come every day, every time, any time, at all times. Are we together? Because your expectations will be disappointed here and again. You will pay the school fees of a child and he will return back with a result that they will ask him to repeat. And then in the PTA letter, they will say they need to see you personally. Are we together? Then they will tell you the school fees has been increased from 50,000 to 75,000. And the boy has returned back out of 50 people in the class. He was 46 or 47. Then if you ever see him playing football, what happens? Pain. Offense. Are we together? Mm. You got somebody to work for you, maybe a house help or somebody to work for you or in a business, your secretary, and you say, type this letter, I need it in the next one hour. And after one hour, you come and see the lady calling a guy and, and then she says, oh, sorry, 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 my madam is coming. You feel like slapping the person and you say, how much is this guy going to give you? We are about to lose something because of your carelessness. Offense. Jesus said it is impossible that no offense should come. One key to overcoming offense is to know that they will always come. Don't expect them, but prepare for them. Please look up. I have seen pastors who cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball. They love God, they fast, they pray, but they cannot look at themselves. I have even seen, do you know there are husbands and wives that cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball. They don't even stay in the same city. How are you? Happy birthday. I hear today is your birthday. I see if you didn't marry her. He said, yes. How are you? How are the children? I hope they are fine. Ah, is that Junior in the phone? Let me talk to him. Junior, how are you? 
All right, bye, 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 bye. And they drop the phone. Offense. You ask them what happened. They say in 1997, I saw one man with my wife and that day I said, me. You see, offense. Let me tell you something. The moment the devil wants to destroy you, listen, please. He sends offense like a guy toasting a lady. If you dare say yes to that offense, you are in trouble. The strength of Satan is offense. Are we together? Every time the devil plots witchcraft, he uses offense like the battery that activates the bomb. You know how you put bomb and the remote control. You stand somewhere and blow the place. That remote control is offense. You finish praying and the answers are about to come. That is exactly when you finish praying, somebody baths with your water. You say, ah, who am I going to kill today? Who am I going to kill today? My hands are shaking. Somebody hold me. Call police. Offense. Have you not noticed that it's exactly when a miracle is coming that offense comes? Your husband who has been a nice man all of a sudden now tells you, look, I, I just want you to know that we are sowing this house to a church. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. It was me too. It was the Holy Spirit. It was so hot in my spirit. We are packing out by tonight. And you are saying, what, what in the world is going on here? Offense. Don't laugh. When you just think status is changing, they just say your result has been placed. And you ask your friend, what did I get? Say, honestly, me too, I just checked my own. You know that there's trouble. They don't want to be the ones to tell you what is there. <laughs> say, me too, I checked it in a hurry. Even me, I'm not clear about my own. Just, just go and check. Offense. Are we together? Mm. Offense. There are so many ways the devil destroys us. I was preparing to go and take my bath and the Lord showed me a vision that is very interesting. And I said I will share it with us. You know how women put towel when they are going to bath? Just at the chest level here. I saw chains on people like hands were lifted. They couldn't come down because of the chains. And that's how people were moving. They couldn't do anything much. And then I said, ah, Lord, what is this? I thought maybe God wanted me to minister to people. And the Lord said, I'm still adding to your message. That's how offense is in the spirit. They cannot move. They cannot do anything. Their hands are tied. Their hands are bound. A woman could not kill John the Baptist, but offense killed him. I hope you know it was offense that killed him. He was angry, locked up in the prison. The man who commissioned Jesus to ministry now sends a few disciples because there were, there were a few loyalists that refused to follow Jesus. And I'm sure they'll come to John and say, John, I'm with you. You are in this prison and I'm with you. Do you know how Jesus is enjoying at your expense? You are here suffering and he's there riding on donkeys and so on and so forth. And at a point, John could not take it again. And John said, please, go and ask this guy, are you the Messiah? You see, offense makes you stupid. You will do and say and be things that you will be irritated later on. Are we together? He said, are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? Look at how Jesus overcame that offense. Jesus would have said, really? Tell John I'm coming. Let me show him that the fact that he baptized me doesn't mean I'm an idiot. Don't ever talk to me like that. I'm the son of the living God. No. Jesus politely and gently prayed. And notice what Jesus said. Blessed is he who is not offended. Because he knew what John's problem was. After he healed the sick, he said, uh -uh, Don't be angry with John. The devil wants to join me and John together. Let me tell you how Satan takes away destiny helpers from your life. Offense. People who you have been friends with for 10 years. The 11th year when the miracle should come, Satan will scheme something. Are we together? Yeah. A man of God who has blessed your life so much. The last service, something will happen. You expected him to call you and prophesy to you and he ignored you. And he just said, this is it. This man, I don't even know whether he's born again or, or what. That thing, they are saying that he's using charm. I'm beginning to reconsider it because ah, I'm here, I'm looking at you all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it was my, my sister also last year or so. One time, 
she said that I did used to prophesy to her. And um, they made up their mind that they were going to pray. And I think she was jokingly telling me that time, her and one of their friends, that if I call any name that sounds like her own, whether it's not her own, she will just come out. Because she has discovered that that's what some people do during miracle service. They just come out and they say, why are you here? And since they are here, they don't go back. Say, I will come out to and stand. <laughs> Offense. Offense is the root of bitterness. Offense is the root of resentment. Write it down. These are the fruits. When a man lives in offense, you live in bitterness. You live in resentment. You live in unforgiveness. You live in hatred. Are we together? Listen, I used to think this is a very, you know, the interesting thing about spiritual growth, ba, the higher you rise, the things you consider trivial, you will find out that they are the pillars upon which your relevance is hinged on. There is a level in your life, Satan will no longer try to use women or money or all these things to destroy you. By grace, you would have overcome that level. And you would think you are free. John the Baptist, imagine if a lady just cat walked to John. John says, are you joking? I ate locusts and wild honey for how many years? I'm about to die. It's you that will come and do the... No, 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 no. And so he used offense and he destroyed him. Do you know a time came when Satan was finding out how am I going to destroy the church? Then he looked for the two chief apostles, Peter and Paul. Are we together? And he was going to join their head together offense to the end that the gospel be sabotaged are we together one time paul wrote a letter about a gentleman called onesimus have you read it pleading on his behalf because his master was offended different things had happened please hear me offense is a trap by Satan to rob you of your joy, to rob you of your peace, to rob you of your advancement, to rob you of the power and the glory of God. A preacher can never preach to people he's offended with. Imagine that I come up here and I say, you people are not sowing into my life. You don't even care whether I'm eating or not. And immediately I'm talking, somebody's phone rings. I say, who are you? Stand up. The church suddenly becomes a military cantonment because I'm offended that you are not sowing into my life and now I'm venting that anger. There are many offended pastors. There are many offended assistant pastors are more offended than pastors. There is even a Nigerian film about that. One Mount Zion film. I watched it and it blessed me in no small way. Because the assistant pastors believe the pastors are chopping alone. They are laboring and the man, and they may be right, but there's still no room for offense. In any way, offense does not bless the victim. You have to learn this. And this is more so for ladies. Let me tell you how you will know. Listen. Let me tell you how you will know that you are free from offense or you are buried in offense. The ease and the speed to which you get insulted and you react to the things that happen to you, right? Is how much you are vulnerable to offense. There are people who get angry every time. As you are right now in Koinonia, there are people already frowning their faces. Because the person sitting near you is looking at every jotting you are writing. And you can almost say, bros, are you deaf? I'm laboring to construct my points and you, you just allow me to labor and you are listening and you write it. Offense. Are we together? Immediately after the grace, another episode, entering the bus. Offense. This koinonia said, is he only, can't they add some more bosses? Had they not seen that we're increasing? Then another person will turn and say, are you paying for it? 
Offense. Are we together? Then you turn to the protocol department. You are offended. They too, they are offended in you. Several people. Then someone goes to the media stand, harasses the people there. They harass him back. Look, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I show you a more excellent way. You can live a life of absolute peace. Absolute tranquility by choice. I made this decision and it has changed my life. Believe me when I tell you I cannot hate people. There's something God has done in me. I cannot hate. I know you would say, ah, people have not offended you, Jerry. You are joking. How would you expect that I'm a leader at this level and have not been offended? I have done things for people. People have done things for me. People have trivialized my benevolence in their lives. You cannot imagine. This is my boy that works for me sometimes, especially when I'm preparing for miracle service. Then he would do something that I just feel, should I play ball with this boy? What should I do with him? And then I just look at him in his innocence and I know that the love of God is at work in me. Has your wife ever done something to you, those who are married, and you just, you, your hand almost lifted and you just took it back and said, ah, <laughs> what's that song we sing? Devil, I see near you. <laughs> Offense. Offense is a cancer that destroys men. There are many prayer warriors who cannot enter the anointing because offense will not let them enter. Watch pastors sit together and everybody is watching who would disrespect him. Everybody who is watching who would do this. Oh, you came late, you sat outside, but apostle came late. They found a seat for him in front. What are you trying to say? Who is not anointed or who is more than who? Offense. It's like many of us are, many of us are like wombs that are ready to receive that seed of offense. Are we together? You are ready to take in. The moment the seed comes, you incubate it and it grows and it destroys you. I'd like you to shout, no offense. No offense. Say it again, no offense. No offense. Parents are angry with children. Children are angry with parents. Right? You've heard me share a lot of things about my dad. But I love my father with all my heart. I cannot be offended with him. No. I love him with all my heart. The, the generation of men, that whole generation, the devil really cheated them. He sold a mindset for them that they received. So it's not their fault. It's a wrong ideology. There are too many things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that can offend us. From your roommate, to your food, to the restaurant, to your lecturer, to your boss, to your subordinate. Everything in life that has the propensity of disappointing your expectation can plant a seed of offense. But you must set a guard over your heart and make up your mind that I will not be offended let me show you one scripture and then i tie up a few things and then we pray this is a simple but powerful message psalm 119 please psalm 119 verse 165 psalm 119 verse 165 psalm 119 i'd like us to read it together please look up one to read great peace have they which love thy law uh-huh and nothing shall offend them hallelujah god is talking about me great peace shalom great peace undisturbed uh -uh. you don't get offended all around someone wore your clothes now humanly speaking that's very painful someone did something nasty you kept your last meal someone came and ate it and you are angry listen offense will come i didn't say it may come it will come even as i'm speaking right now there are you're going to have all kinds of reasons to be angry are we together disappointed expectations but are you going to make up your mind that great peace i have i love your law i love your ways and as a result i will not be offended trust me i have I thought this was impossible until my life 
became an experience of it. You will never, I tell you this, you will never see me sit down with bitter hatred and I'm thinking of somebody. Let me tell you something. Do you know what Satan does to you when you are offended? He begins to plant in you ideas for revenge. The key, the proof that offense has eaten you is that there is a force that stimulates you for revenge. So Faustina did something to me. And I sit down and I'm thinking, how do I hurt this girl? Now, please listen. Different departments. Protocol department, listen too. Because you guys work with people. And you have about the greatest of propensity to being offended. And you can think, next week, how do I do this? How do I do that? No, it's bad. Listen, let people see you and see the life of Jesus at work in you. Sisters, am I speaking to you? Don't say I'm like that. Oh. Ha, you touch me, you touch fire. No, no. The fire is towards darkness, not your fellow man. Say, I will disgrace this girl. I swear, I will do something for this girl. She, she will run away with her head in this area. No. For a Christian, who believes the Holy Ghost is at work in you? The question I want to ask you for making that decision is what is the role of the Holy Spirit in that decision you are taking? What role is he playing? You embarrass me, I will show you. Ah! Just because I'm silent, it doesn't... No, no, brothers and sisters, make up your mind that you will master the law of love. And you will see people sit down and plot against you. And while they are plotting, because love never fails, their plot will be a waste. Ah, put a charm for me on the road, on, 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 on the road as I travel and love. Listen, listen. The Bible says, the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous, lest he dips his hand in iniquity. Quarter to shame, you see love bail you out. Are we together? Many crises in different areas. When the devil is about to spark crisis, he creates an occasion for offense. And that's the trigger. Believe me when I tell you this. Offense. Ah! Did you hear what they said about Ejimi? And Ejimi says, really? Jordan, it's me you are saying this to. Look, let me tell you something. Many of us live in a world that is not ex in existence. A world where... You believe that every other person around is your kind. Nobody offends me. There are many of us who cannot be friends for two weeks. The lifespan of your friendship is two weeks. Anything people do. Um, sorry, Rose. Rose, what's your name? You don't know my name? Me? How many times will I tell you my name? You are calling me Rose. I don't know who that Rose is. But I get the message. You have sent the message to me. No wonder you are not faithful. Stupid boy. Rose Abi. I will find out who that Rose is. That's the end of that useful relationship that would have led to marriage. Listen. Listen. Offense is a choice. I want you to know it. Walking in love is a choice. It has nothing to do with convenience. It's a choice. People offend me every day. Believe me when I tell you this. Every day. Every day. One time someone was ringing my phone around, was it 2 a.m. or so? Up to 30 missed calls, honestly. And then the person sent, I, 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 sent, I said, please, t a text message, please. And the person said, it's an emergency. And then eventually I picked and, and then it was a lady and she was laughing. She said, honestly, a lot of things have been happening in my life and I want to share with you. After five minutes, I found out that this lady was not saying anything constructive. I was so sad because I was in the middle of a deep meditation. Something was landing solid from heaven. This lady just cut short that flow. And I gently sent her a text. I said, please, next time, um, it's important that you, you know, learn this and that and that. And she just sent me a reply, thanks. <laughs> let me tell you what you would have done. You will call back immediately and say, see, let me tell you. Ah, uh -uh, I'm the one who called you. Just allow me. Look, that if you do anything again, I know where you are. We have protocol that work with police. Ah, what is all this? 
if you want to throw me down, God has kept me for many years. You are the Jezebel that wants to throw me down. Let me tell you, your plans will fail. I'm even rebuking this. Offense. Is God helping us? This is where we betray our loyalty to Jesus. Because so many people find offense. Little things spark offense. Even during prayer, you are praying and somebody is just shouting and you look and say, what is this now? If you are praying, stand there. Then you continue. Listen, gentlemen, I don't have only two eyes. Trust me. No offense. Are we together? When you make up your mind that you will not be offended, you have given Satan a blow that he will never recover from. Oh, hallelujah. That emotional state that has come as a result of what Satan has done for us. There are men of God who are very anointed, but their offense can be bad. They can be angry. They can stand on stage and I mean just lash it down at members and you know that this anger, this venting of anger is personal. Look at me. Let's examine for a few minutes the things offense has taken from us and the things it has given to us, if any. Number one, offense has destroyed godly relationships. I don't mean love relationships. Quality destiny relationships. Quality destiny relationships. There are many of us, the way we are now, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be long married, but offense. Regardless of how many times you have been delivered in miracle service, the demons have left, but that gate of offense has remained. Please hear me. I've told you this. Offense is a sign that you are self-centered. So if things do not happen your way, at your time, at your pace, right? Offense is not rebuking people and correcting things and straightening things. Offense is bitter anger and rage. The emotional frustration that is communicated as a result of disappointed expectations. I learned early in life that people are not me. I'm, I'm quite well. I don't think I'm a perfectionist. I just am a thorough person. And when I see people who do not do things thoroughly, most times it troubles me a lot. Especially if they are complacent in mediocrity. I feel they are not taking advantage of the truths they are learning. And most times I will press it down on them. Are we together? But never to be offended. I created a strategy to use my disappointment as lecture halls. Every time I'm disappointed in people, instead of becoming a boxer, I become a lecturer. Are we together? And so I just turn and I tell them, okay, look guys, next time you do this, next time you do that is the antidote to offense there are many lovely ladies in this place whose destiny has been shot not because of witchcraft or whatever offense you are angry at everything and friends you must summon the courage to calm people down and remind them that they are christians don't endorse people's offense are we together you never remind me of my mistakes but you show me my destiny what an awesome god you are you're an awesome awesome god listen when you remember what Jesus has done for you and how he forbears with you, you will hardly have the time for offense. There are marriages about to shred themselves to pieces. 20 years of marriage, 30 years of marriage, now with grandchildren, 
but offense is stepping in. There are business partners who have been long-standing men and women of loyalty. They have survived every kind of storm, but offense is about to pass them away. I have seen great friends, friends that you know God joined them together. Satan used offense to scatter them. Are we together? Yeah. Anything you do that is not in love, I assure you, you will fail. Please hear me. I assure you, you will fail. Do not say we are like that in our family. Do not say the village where I come from, everybody plus our traditional head is like that. Do not say my pastor is like that. I, I got that anger from him. Even me, I'm, I'm a better version of himself. Wait till you see him. That he's a pastor does not mean his offense is justifiable. Please listen to me. The fact that we are men of God does not make us perfect in ourselves. We are still growing. It's called an election of grace. If we are not arrogant to admit we are growing, then we implicate ourselves. Are we together? Koinonia, listen to me. If you want to be a man and a woman of influence, you want to host God's glory and power, you must love people. And the grand key to loving people is to know that the opportunities for offense will come every day. Every day, without fail. Are we together? I was on my way coming and while I was going out, someone just passed and looked at me and I saw the way he just frowned at me and hissed. Kilo day, what is my own now? I'm sure he probably saw what I was wearing and he just said, Nigeria, dollar is going down, you are trying to see. Let me tell you, there are many easy ways to be offended. One of it is at the success of others. Are we together? Somebody you know does not earn money and God just opens the door for favor. And she wears a nice hair. You just look and say, huh. a lot is happening in this koinonia. It's only God that knows what is going on. Even people who don't have money, things are happening to them. Both the one God is doing and the one that... You see, all those statements of sarcasm are expressions of offense. The moment you are offended, you begin to look for loopholes in others. Because you are looking for loopholes to trivialize what they are becoming. Are we together? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we banish offense. We banish offense. Look, free yourself from offense so that Satan will not have anything to hold on to you for. Whether you insult me, whether you do whatever to me, no problem. God bless you. If I'm sad, I go to God, I cry out my life to him, and I give him all the praise. Are we together? Otherwise, you will hate people. A time will come, you will develop a sense of resentment for everybody. Then you will finally hate yourself and commit suicide and die. You will hang yourself and die. The hospitals are full of people under different kinds of tranquilizers responding to offense. They are in the hospital and the man's wife calls and his, his BP just goes up because he says, that's the woman, that's the witch, that's the idiot that is responsible for me being in this hospital. If she off that gas, it will not burn my face. Let that woman not come to greet me. People have died just because they saw people. Let me tell you, offense is worse than malaria. It's worse than HIV. Because the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. Are we together? There are many pastors whose true ministerial potentials cannot come to bear because the moment they stand on stage, five minutes, their communication is pain and offense. Are we together? I, one time I was advising a man of God who was fighting with another man of God and he said, honestly, that the day they will invite them for the same meeting, that what he's going to do to that person was telling me, I kept quiet and I allowed him. And truly, the other person really offended him. What he did was very bad. And I told him, I said, but will you win that? We said, Apostle, mm, don't come with this thing. Me, I'm telling you, I will do it. I will do it. And I looked at him. I said, you are saying this thing before the God who will keep you alive till that day. You are offending him as you are saying that. Yet his love for you will keep you till the day you will perform that wickedness. You are planning that tomorrow you will kill somebody 
and you say, oh God, protect me as I sleep. I wake up tomorrow and this will come. While you are praying that prayer, offending the most high and trivializing his creation, he protects you. You wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Jesus. Let me tie my wrapper. Let's go to the neighbor's house and, and let, let me tear this woman and let her know that I'm not weak. When I think about what the Lord has done in my life, I cannot but throw away offense. We are going to pray seriously tonight. I'm stopping early because we are going to pray. Are we together? When you overcome offense, sisters, I want you to pray twice. Every prayer will be praying once because that spirit must die this night. Say amen. amen. Offense. Love never fails. It's a secret of land. If you look at me today and you say, Joshua Selman, I promise you, I will destroy you. Let me tell you what Satan does. For that prophecy to work, offense needs to be triggered. If offense is triggered, meaning I look at you and I say, really, you want to destroy me. You have drawn the line. Offense. The moment offense is ready to detonate that bomb. Boom. And two of you will die. That's the painful part. So the moment you say that, I go back and I say, no. I love this sister. I love this brother. Lord, I love Oga Jordan. He's done something stupid, but I love him. And while you are saying that, your entire flesh is saying you are joking. I don't agree with you. And you tell it, remain there. I'm speaking. You must conform. Listen, listen. I'm teaching you how to beat your body down and force it in alignment and in obedience. One of the greatest ways to walk in love is to verbalize it, calling the names of the people who have offended you. Oh, I love my music director. He shouted at me yesterday, but I love him. I love him with all my heart. I love him with all my heart. We are a team. Oh, the protocol took my seat and they gave another person. No, I refuse to be offended. There is love in this ministry. I love the protocol. I love Shadrach. I love all of them. And the devil is saying, do you really love the pain that is killing you there? That's how you get it out. Listen. Every plot of Satan depends on offense to be triggered. Don't trigger it. You've been triggering a lot of things in your life through offense. A brother calls you and he says, see, is it because I'm trying to ask you out that you are behaving like this? Okay, let me tell you now, there are many other ladies better than you. Don't even come near me. And you, you now look and say, ah, this guy, no. I love this person. Your friends will say, that's how you keep doing mumu and be a failure. Everybody will be playing with you. Give it to somebody as a lesson. Let me tell you, the day you are about to give it to somebody, that's when Satan will cheat you. Because he knows that you are not, you don't give in easily. Now that he has gotten you to give in, he will capitalize on it. You will be sick. You will be depressed. Everything will be destroyed in your life. Offense has taken away relationships. Number two, offense has aborted prophecies. Offense has aborted prophecies. It was never John's destiny to die. He was a prophet that foran Jesus Christ, but offense killed him. Let me tell you what offense has done to people. Number three, offense has empowered the operation of witchcraft in the lives of people. Offense. You know why different spirits keep roaming around our families in spite of prayer requests, in spite of miracle service? I will tell you why. Because there is offense. Sister is fighting brother. Brother is fighting sister. Oh, this guy. He's the person who was, who crashed the car that we are using now. Would have been any money from it. There are many of us for years who have not spoken to our brothers and our sisters. And families that are polygamous, listen to me. Polygamous families. Mothers have trained their children. So although you and your stepbrother are in the same territory, you don't see eyeball to eyeball. They've not done anything. It's an extension of a war. We destroy, we end that war tonight in the name of Jesus. When you love people who do not deserve it, you become neutral to the effect of anything the devil wants to bring through them. Are we together? Look, let me tell you. I don't know how many troubles in this life I have been delivered from. And it was not 
necessarily prayer is my refusal to be offended. I know what I'm telling you. Listen to me. The moment you refuse to be offended, you will leave the devil bowing his head down because shame will be his lot for sure. Koinonia, are you hearing me? Gentlemen, I'm speaking to you. Offense. After tonight's meeting, there are many of you that need to send texts to certain people and say, look, how are you? I just listened to a message and I want to tell you I love you. The person can send you a text and say, I rather love Satan than love you back. No problem. You won't just say, you see, this is why I hate coming for Koinonia. Apostle keeps making us look like idiots. Don't worry. I'm showing you a more excellent way. Be foolish and rise to a level where you become a leader. Do we love Jesus? This is what to do. Somebody did something for me one time. It was so painful. And then one time the person called me and said, please, I should help him with money. He's dying. As if he forgot what he did. <laughs> he said, help me, apostle. You are the only one who can help me with money. And I think at that time, someone had just sown some amount to my life. I think it was 300,000 or something. And the Lord asked me to give him everything. Everything. That's how I transferred everything to that person. He never called to say thank you. God is my witness till tomorrow. Now, look, let me tell you. If you ever tie your joy to what people do to you, you will frown your way to hell, to hell, not even to death, to hell. You will stop at death. You will keep going till you go to hell. I never, listen, listen, I never bless people expecting anything in return from them. I expect in return from God. It's risky to depend on people for joy. Ah! I've got peace in my heart. Peace in my heart. Peace in my heart all the time. I've got peace in my heart. Peace in my heart. Sing it. Peace in my heart all the time. I've got joy. I've got joy in my heart. Joy in my heart. Joy. joyful regardless of your external environment don't come out in the morning waiting for news to make you happy you will live a sad life especially now that we're in july the journey is already unbearable for people those who are already pushing on one leg around pushing on their knees you will be angry come out of your house in the morning and see how angry people are a bus conductor is smiling at you right now madam you they go one minute later he's insulting you just because you are not going. Are we together? The driver is angry with him and insulting him that he should enter. Let them go. You see people fighting because of five naira, ten naira. It's my money, even if it's five naira. Yes, it's my sweat. Give me my thing. And they are fighting. Look, let me tell you life is too short for offense to be the code of your existence. You must learn to be happy. And in being happy, you offend many people. That's the sad thing. There are people who are angry. When they see you frowning like them, it's like we're a family. But they see you come, you are singing, oh God is faithful, you know, and they look at you. And they say, ah, what, what's wrong? What is all this? You are shouting too much. Keep quiet. Abba. And you're like, no, I'm just giving up. Please. Go to church if you want to shout. You just leave them quietly. You already know that something is boiling. There's a volcano within their spirit waiting for expression. They insult you. You tell them God bless you. Say, Apostle, should I really say God bless you? Honestly, say God bless you. Trust me. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Ah, you are suddenly trying to be a Christian. When you were eating my food yesterday, you are even saying, God bless you. I was in Koinonia too. I heard what Apostle said. Let me tell you. Ah, God bless you. Leave them there. 
I'm teaching you very relevant things because Satan will test this knowledge you are hearing. Some of you this night, as we are rounding up, just we are rounding up Koinonia. As you are going out, somebody will just come trying to greet someone and just push you to the wall. And the moment that happens, just remember offense. It takes from me and never gives anything to me. It takes relationships. It takes graces. It takes anointings. Offense has killed businesses, has killed people, has destroyed lives. There are many ladies here, no joy, no peace. You are looking older than your age. You are angry with everybody, including me. Angry. What exactly is the reason? Me too, I don't know. I'm just angry. Everything is, I mean, this life self. Let me even kill myself. Ah, if it will reduce the, the, the trouble in the world, please, at least go. Let it be that you didn't finish your assignment. There are too many angry people. Did you know over 80% of people who call me for counseling are angry with somebody? Why? Apostle, do you know my elder sister can comfortably bring out 5 million and bless me? And she's watching me in this misery. Entitlement mentality, producing offense. You are angry. Your sister is enjoying. You are dying. She's five blood pressure free you are high blood pressure full at at age 22 you are already dying she's not do you know let me tell you something sometimes the people we are offended about are living in a world of joy beulah and hefzibah surrounded by the goodness of god and we are there dying you talk about them they don't know they will never hear it's, it's a bad business don't do that kind of business the business of offense is bad no returns whatsoever it will kill you ask doctors how many people get all kinds of sicknesses and diseases because there is no love please lift your right hand and say the love of god dwells in me and from today i love my neighbors i love my enemies i love my betrayers oh yes absolutely you've got to love them put down your hand god bless you you will find a lot of people saying so many things somebody called me one day to gossip uh, somebody somewhere said something about me and the person thought it would be a pleasant advantage that you call me called and say apostle I, I i shouldn't tell you this but kai i love you too much i have to tell you he thought that it would be something impressive and i laughed i said what is it and he said so 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 person said a and b and c and i just stopped him i said there's no problem. he said you need to hear the, i've not even said the parts that this way i said no problem it's, look i took the pain i promised him i won't tell anybody but i i said kai no 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 i can't i would do this and that and that i told him i said no you mean you don't want to hear i said yes okay let me send you text i said no he did send the text i didn't even read it i deleted it from my phone completely listen you have a responsibility to keep your atmosphere offense free if it means if it means calling off certain relationships to live offense free do it are we together if it means playing a fool sometimes for things to just happen no problem say i will live offense free say it i will live offense free My one desire is that you be praised, that you be praised, that you be praised. Listen, let me tell you the advantage of living offense free. Number one, tremendous joy, not happiness, joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost fully manifested in your life this joy was so bubbling in me yesterday while i prepared for this we had to play a song i wish we could play it the media could oh okay people suspected i would sing it or something see them laughing we had to play that song i mean i had to pause with the lecture and we took a two minutes break to play that detrick hedden song just because i was excited Look, the world is already angry. Don't join them. They are angry about things they don't know. And when they see you happy, some of you, whenever you see people shout, you say, God, this guy said, they are noisy. What is all this? No. The joy of the Lord 
is my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Truly is our strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. It is my strength. The joy of the Lord. It's time for us to get that lack of love and that offense, pain, pain and rage that has come as a result of that kind of life. Sing it from the heart. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first benefit is joy. Number two, the next benefit of an offense free life is a tremendous dimension of spiritual power. There is nobody I know who works in heavy dimensions of the anointing who does not work in love. No, it's impossible. Nobody I know, I'm telling you this. There remained this tree. Faith that produces miracles. Hope that keeps men expectant. And love. It says the greatest of this is love. And the antidote to a life of hatred and bitterness. Is to rid yourself of offense. The anointing. Number three. The third benefit of walking in love. And walking free of offense. Is favor. Ah. Look, let me tell you, if you make up your mind to not be offended, you will, you will experience favor that will even make you afraid. Testimonies that you'll be afraid to share because you ask yourself, will people believe this if I tell them? He says, I will walk a walk in your days. Right? That you will not believe even if it were told you. I will walk a walk. Are we together? Favor has closed away from our lives because offense drove it away. Offense. In all my life, I think the last two years of my life have been the most favorful years of my life. And it was within these two years, God began to teach me this. It was during my retreat, God began to teach me. We didn't talk of power. We didn't talk of anointing. God says, son, you are stepping into a higher dimension of grace, higher dimension of leadership, and I will need you to know this. And the Lord began to teach me. It came with a new light. I was ashamed of myself and at how much, I'm, I, I, I don't consider myself to be a troublemaker, but you know, leadership surrounds you with so many things that can cause pain in your heart, and I had to pray. I had to just pray and say, look, I love everybody. I love my family. I love Koinonia. I love everybody. And a tremendous dimension of grace came upon my life. And now I see favor after favor. It started like trickles of rain. And now it's coming in a way I cannot even stop. It's not all about prayer. It's about true love. As soon as I got down from the car, there was one little girl. She was watching me, I think, with her mother and another person. Immediately, I dropped. That's how she ran to me. On a very good day, I would look at her and say, hey, go, go back to your mother. That's what we do to children and threaten them. I gave that lady a big hug. I was almost bringing her here to come and sit down with me because she said she wanted to sit inside. I just said, okay, one auntie, one usher should help her. But I was going to bring that lady to come and sit down to give her joy and expression please say after me in the name of jesus the lifestyle of hatred the lifestyle of resentment the lifestyle of bitterness the lifestyle of jealousy the lifestyle of rage leaves my life forever are we together before we pray we're going to do something are we together as we sing that song, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We are going to get up and we are going to walk around. Some of you even need to go outside. 
everybody is going to give everybody a big hug and listen listen don't stand up many of you like playing so your body's already itching we are serious here we're not playing games are we together don't be offended as you do it because i know that offense will happen some of you to be tested right away somebody will match you and be laughing and you are wondering say, ah, why are you doing this but listen there are people here you know you have not hugged yourself for weeks this night that's the night you are going to hug and you if they are coming to you don't do as if you are not hearing what i've been saying there must be forgiveness there must be love generous lavish love appreciate people if it's someone who has offended you i'm sorry yesterday i spoke something that was not good it's over it's over a minute you are not saying anything that is negative and nobody is too big to practice this everybody is going to walk around ready the joy of the lord stand up move around five minutes for this the joy of the lord. go ahead walk around those following us online hug everybody close to you every pain every secret bitterness let it go in the name of jesus christ celebrate everybody let that bitterness live your life let that pain live your life whether or not you know them tell them i love you i honor you we may come from different churches we may have differences in beliefs but i choose to be joyful the devil is a liar we must grow in love we must grow in love make sure you are greeting somebody Well, many of you cannot go out so just return back at least you have two neighbors your left and right give them a big hug i know you think we're joking but something is happening to people did you remember to hug the protocol department some of you don't love them look for them and hug them oh you have to look for them and hug them no 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 don't come to hug me hug others hug others Hug Shedrach, hug the protocol department. I missed the boss last week, but I love you. Lift your voice, say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. From today, I declare that the spirit of offense will never find expression in my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray seriously. Pray, pray. Pray, pray. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love, it says I am nothing, a clashing symbol. Pray, shake it, take it, take it. No offense, no offense, no offense, no offense in the name of the Lord Jesus.
Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Say in the name of Jesus. I release everyone I've been holding in my heart. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every person who has offended me, I release them. Lift your voice and begin to pray. It's painful, but pray. It's painful, but pray. Release your father. Release your mother. Pray. Pray. You may cry, but pray. I finally release my roommate. I release that pastor. I release that church. I release that ministry. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm ready to move higher. No unforgiveness. I release them. They spoke a bad against me. It was a gossip, and I got to hear about it. But I release them. Genuinely, I release them. Sincerely, I release them. Passionately. Oh, I release them. I release them. I release that brother. I release that sister. I release that pastor. That I cannot see eyeball to eyeball. Hallelujah. Is God blessing us? I tell you, I see a lot of things happening to people. Prayer point number three. The spirit of unforgiveness and revenge. We are going to cause it. Because some of us right now. We are already plotting how to pay back. It's devilish. No. You never pay evil for evil. It says you overcome evil with good. Lift your voice and say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of unforgiveness. And revenge. At work in my life. By the blood of Jesus. I cast you out of my life. Lift your voice and pray. No revenge. No revenge. No unforgiveness. Shaba katala wadash. Ebra katala wadash. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for your friend. Every spirit of unforgiveness. Every spirit. Those online. Make sure you are praying with us. Those online. Make sure you are praying. Every spirit of unforgiveness. Every spirit of revenge. Planning to rejoice at the downfall of others. Planning to rejoice at the downfall of others. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear me. Some of you are already waiting for bad news from your family members. Some of you are already waiting to, to hear that the rich people you are angry with, something has happened to their fortune so that you can rejoice. It's devilish to rejoice over the downfall of somebody you love. God is a God of judgment, but he's a God of love. Are we together? No anger, no revenge. Some of us, who knows that there are people here planning after Koinonia. They won't even go home. They want to brand somewhere and go and flog out something. No. No. Revenge is for fools. He said, vengeance is mine. Say, yet the Lord. It's not yours. Are we together? Are we together? I'd like you to pray. You are going to ask the Lord to baptize you with a fresh love for people. Not just people you know. People that you develop an, a love and a sense of sympathy. That like Jesus, you can look at people like sheep without a shepherd. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Lord, compassion for people. Pastors, pray. Give me compassion for my members. I don't just want to be a preacher. I want to love people genuinely. 
don't love their congregation a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep many husbands are selfish and self-centered to hell with their family for as long as it does not affect them many wives are selfish and self-centered the children would rather not go to school for you to buy a new lace that's self-centeredness many relationships are self-centered because they have to do with people who are always thinking myself. That's the next prayer point. Lord, kill selfishness. And I want you to receive it. Brothers and sisters, you will step into levels of the anointing if you keep offense far from you. Don't hear this thing I'm telling you and then trivialize it. And don't let anybody tell you this is, this is food for babes. You are joking. You are joking. When you rise in the spirit, you will find out that this is solid food. It can rob men of their dignity. It authorizes Satan to destroy men. Are we together? I pray for you from the depth of my heart. That every spirit of unforgiveness and every spirit of revenge that is eating you up like a cancer and stopping you from manifesting and becoming all that God has destined for you to be, I command that spirit to live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Whatever offense has taken from you, some of you have lost relationships, very good relationships that you may never get that kind again. I'm not talking of love relationships, good, real, meaningful relationships with people just because of weaknesses here and there. Some of us have lost opportunities. God brought valuable people into your life, but because of offense. Listen, I want you to learn tonight that it is not all about you are we together ladies am i talking to you you have to learn this i don't know who who are those preaching all these rubbish messages all around and making ladies feel it is all about you no it's not all about you it is about you but it's not all about you are we together so that that attitude that makes you live in a kingdom where everything must happen at your terms the moment your terms are compromised, you are angry. You are living in an illusion. It's children that live in that world. Are we together? I pray for you. The grace to be selfless. To also consider the pain of others. The grace to be selfless. To also consider how your decisions affect others. I release it upon you in the name of Jesus. I release it upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Those of us who are easy to begin to hate people. Just one little statement. You, you find out that you are struggling with hatred. It's like you are, you are almost a sadist. You can't find joy in anything. The lifespan of your relationship with people is not more than two weeks. Something must come and you will fall to it. I separate you from that kind of life from today. In the name of Jesus. And I command healing for people here who have been so hot. Now, I'm not denying the fact that when people offend you, it can be painful. Many of you have carried these wounds for years. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, as I pray for you, that wound must heal right now. I don't know who has said what against you or about you. 
or towards you i don't know who has done what against you or about you or towards you you so resent the person the moment you see the person there is this arousal of anger let it die tonight in the name of jesus i release upon you the courage to make peace the courage to make peace the courage to go out of your way and make peace and i pray for you the relationships you lost i call them back into your life the opportunities you lost i call them back into your life the anointings and the graces and the dimensions of prayer and work with god you used to fellowship with that offense brought you down and you are now so carnal as if you never walked in that level of power i command a restoration for you every prayer life that has died here as a result of offense the moment you go to pray the devil brings memories of pain and you can't pray you are there three hours but you are not saying anything be free from me tonight in the name of jesus closely related to the spirit of offense there are many of us there is a spirit upon us if you don't gossip you cannot sleep it's not that you don't want to there is something in you is demonic if nobody has told you no now that is demonic you cannot be trusted with informations talking to you is as is as good as saying it in a radio station something keeps pinching you until that information leaves you let me tell you if you are suffering that thing here i want you to know it's an attack from the pit of hell especially sisters oh I, me too they told me oh don't tell anybody it's a spirit it's a spirit and it's killing you because god cannot commit a great man into your hands great men are great because of the secrets that they have you want god to bring a great man in your life and your mouth is running like tap god will not carry his precious son and put in your life same thing with gentlemen god will not carry his precious daughter and commit to you are we together there are some of us you want access to wealth you want access to organizations and corporations but your mouth gossiping backbiting your your is it's like you have this sense of sarcasm you always see something wrong in everything it's a bitter spirit five minutes into your conversation you are talking about somebody what you are saying may be right but do you not have anything better with your life i like you to in one minute i'm still praying for you but i like you to pray and say lord this spirit of gossip this spirit that makes me dash down my reputation let it live my life it has not profited me lift your voice and pray god stop trusting you with information about men's life you used to operate in the prophetic but everything you see you say you don't know what is sayable and what is not worthy of being spoken pray our mouths have ensnared many of us you you have, you have sown seeds of discord friends good friends good friends you have got informations that are irrelevant planted enmity between people it must live tonight hallelujah praise the lord can you be trusted with relationships can you be trusted with valuable relationships advantageous connections can god bring people of influence in your life and then you don't become a parasite and a nuisance to them are we together now yes i've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy and blessed people god is my witness i never if we are in a restaurant with them i pay for it both myself and them i will fight to make sure that i don't allow that let me tell you what many of us will do we finish and say sahaba you that uh, you have this thing me that so your boys are struggling and the man looks at you and says this guy is not an advantage to me go 
you see demons don't just walk anyhow they observe your weakness and build a fortification around it if your weakness is lack of wisdom that becomes their access point you can be delivered you can fall and rise our hearts are full of faith but many believers our heads are empty there's no strategy there is no wisdom so we are full of faith but we never rise strategically or we cannot maintain our lifting can God trust you with relationships are we together can God trust you with influence influence the ability to compel loyalty from people is a dangerous thing to be influential you know there's a statement on easy lies the head that wears the crown listen very carefully it's a miracle service the miracle has already happened are we together this that i'm giving you maybe second to salvation is one of the greatest miracles that is happening in this place this night then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture the system of god is something that we must study otherwise we will keep mocking and flattering ourselves with one testimony today never to have another one tomorrow and you see when your life is void of predictable results you will be angry you will be resentful you will begin to hate people you will look exactly like the man with one talent can god trust you with influence you have access to people you can say pastor femi go and remove this tie and bring it and he says yes sir take gentleman remove this your watch and give me god said it and he believes in the word of god upon you can you have the discipline to be shown his bank account and see one million and keep quiet not to say sir now that i've i've encouraged you please encourage me too and the man say i don't have anything he says it's not true you have five hundred and seventy eight thousand eighty nine cobble and best say it's true now that was not the holy ghost the gift was from god the use was from a mindset that has not been well constructed by god are we together he gave unto them five two one according to their abilities then he collected from one that had one i thought he would keep it to himself the goal was never to keep it to himself he gave the guy that now had 10 to have 11. sometimes depletion in your life is not a message from satan depletion in your life is a message from god to you that your stewardship is under attack are we together when resources begin to deplete mysteriously when relationships begin to deplete mysteriously when influence begins to deplete mysteriously it's not just a call to go and pray and bind it's the time to pray inquiry prayers lord what is going on why is it that i could call this woman yesterday and she would pick but now i am calling her and she's saying sorry i'm in a meeting why am i i mean the top five people who were channels of favor in my life are now too busy for me it's a message it's not just something no there must be a spirit oh, oh god i write a prayer point number one prayer point number two no let's be intelligent in our approach it is a message from god to you that you are something is wrong with your stewardship all of a sudden you go for a meeting and the power the grace and the glory of god does not flow you find out that there is a struggle with revelation it happens in one meeting you give an excuse that the people didn't fast it happens in another meeting you give an excuse that the sound was not very nice after five meetings go for a retreat quickly depletion is proof that your stewardship is being questioned from the realm of the spirit because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter are we together i'm teaching you the systems of the kingdom when you see things that used to work in your life and all of a sudden in a succession not just one area of your life in a succession doors begin to close could it be that you are becoming the man with one talent 
this is the miracle that some of us need right now i know some of us came believing that look it, it can be i was a millionaire 2004 and then now i'm going down and right now i don't even have up to hundred thousand in my account there must be a spirit i know that apostle is going to speak one word when i fall under the anointing and rise that will be over listen i don't want you to be frustrated it could be that that withdrawal is god's mercy to you he pegged you at a level he rated you and saw the highest level where your stewardship was at his best and kept you there notice that there are certain blessings that come to us no matter how much it reduces to reach a threshold and remains there there are some people let me use finances as an instance they never cross two hundred thousand. give them five million something will happen but when it's now within the range of two hundred thousand, it will remain in the account it is the level you have been pegged in the spirit as the level that will allow you become most faithful over god's resources are we together lord i want to marry a man of god god says can i trust you with the assignment i have given him not the influence he has the assignment can you stand the persecution everybody calling you a witch stupid woman she's eating church money to buy shoe and still keep quiet and say lord bless these members or will you be the reason members will leave the man of god's church and say i love this man but his wife is a stranger Can you sit in the midst of great power and still go down on your knees before God? Or you'll be conscious, ah, let me not kneel down before all these small children. Let them not think I'm... <clears throat> David danced before God. Danced before God. And the daughter of Saul, his wife, said, Abba, O oh king, have you forgotten you are royalty? Don't, uh, you are falling your hand. David said, I'm dancing before the God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave to me. While that discussion was going, God was listening. And she died not having a child. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Listen, I believe that one of the signs that God wants to produce in this ministry is a combination of strange levels of the anointing and strange levels of prosperity these two dimensions i really believe that god wants to bring it in a superior dimension in this house but the question is can god trust you there are people who will stop going to church stop going to the house of god if they have a house a car and maybe some a few millions in the account do you know that there are certain levels of increase truly speaking that when you get to you will not have any personal prayer request again really so what will you do with your prayer time what will the five hours in his presence be spent for because now there seem to be legitimate reasons you can take every prayer request one one hour and before you know it is five hours your pain keeps you there but what if the pain is taken away may god never give me anything he cannot take back it's my miracle service prayer for myself may god never give me any influence any anointing any access you know how children behave that you give them something and say give me back and they refuse that's how many of us are it belongs to him and any day and any time he makes demand of it let it go in a heartbeat abraham take now thy son thy only son don't try to tell me he's the only one i know and i know you love him rise up the mountain the bible said abraham got up early in the morning carried isaac and was on his way to go today we say abraham's blessings are ours and jesus said if ye be the children of abraham then you will do the works of abraham sacrifice 
death it belongs to him that if God commits the anointing to you you will not go back home and begin to merchandise and then when you hear your pastor of your local assembly preaching you now say look at this man here the nonsense is preaching misguided revelation no power what am I doing in this church open to the book of ah, first Kings chapter 4 that's where he's going and you become like the man with the one talent and then you find out the last meeting you went to is the last do you think you are anointed doors suddenly close not all closed doors are demonic God closes doors he can shut it and no man can open including a man of God he shuts it to keep you it is his way of bringing preservation so that you will not be lost hallelujah increase can bring pride money can bring pride anointing can bring pride you see i've had the privilege of hosting god's anointing to a measure and i know what the anointing can do the anointing can turn you to become like a god human beings can worship you if necessary it is up to you to not be foolish and rent your garment if need be and say look i know i'm divine but don't forget i'm human my dominion is shared dominion not absolute dominion there are many of us who will not look for honor but when you get it and it's rising beyond the level you know should be you won't stop it it's still seen i know how far god has taken me and when i see human beings about to dehumanize themselves in the name of honoring the grace of god upon my life i must behave myself wisely to say no no you have honored me enough i get the message don't go beyond this and god says i can trust you with more I was at Benny Hinn's meeting last week and while I sat down and I was just watching the man of God minister the grace the power the presence I said what level of trust did this man show God that granted him this level of grace with a single word brothers and sisters miracles were happening as though it was a charm rising from wheelchairs as if people as if they said everybody stand up Casually, and it was not an issue to him all the honor and the glamour there it didn't concern him at all when he got up and took the mic he was you could see his heart crying in the presence of God I said that's it that's a man who has met presidents he does not meet a president a president meets him and calls it a privilege and yet he can kneel down before God and roll like a child please let's learn a lesson tonight there is something about our understanding that is making our prayers look like it is not answered especially for those of us here who have come to receive the impartation you will get it this is not a thing of age this is not a thing of level it's a thing of alignment through knowledge hallelujah i have watched people with little honor and i've seen the way they have misused the grace of god given to them and this is the message god put in my heart to share with us shortly we are going to rise and we are going to be celebrating the hand of god here some of you who are coming here for the first time i'm sure you have followed online you have followed the teachings or you have heard testimonies of what god is doing with the man of god this is the man of god this is all of me so take now that you have seen me take your eyes away and trust the god of heaven to surprise you this is all jesus you believe higher, higher. Let my 
my king let my king be let my king be lifted up let it be a revelation let my king be lifted not Joshua Selman, not Koinonia, not miracles, not anointing. Oh, you have captured my heart, continue my heart to your love. That's my testimony tonight. May you have captured my heart, consume my heart, my heart your life. Sing it from the depth of your heart as a revelation. You have captured my heart, consume my heart, your life. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Enough to take away every pain and every demon. But if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Listen to me. The first miracle God is giving you tonight, listen, is the humility to be able to say, Lord, no matter where you take me, no matter what you give me, I remain yours forever. Nothing will ever be able to take your place in my life. Not power, not money, not anointing, not miracles, not influence. Let me tell you, if you can pass this test tonight, then there is no limit to what God can do in your heart. Lift your voice and pray passionately to God. Thank you. Go ahead. Lord, I can't be trustworthy. Go ahead and pray. Walk on my heart. Walk on my tendencies. Walk on my heart. Walk on pride. If all I say, if all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Pray from the depth of your heart. If all I say is Jesus, 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 that's more than enough. Let it be your prayer. The miracle is already happening to you. Sing you have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. It's the secret of the mighty hand of God upon a man. You have and I, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, not if Joshua Selman, not if Koinonia, thank God for the honor. But if I be lifted up, then I will draw beyond revelation, beyond gimmicks. I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray and cry to God. Father, mercy upon my tendencies, my tendencies with money, my tendencies with pride. I cry. This is the miracle service happening to us already. Lift your voice and pray. Lift the issue of house and sickness. Pray, pray. forget about your business forget about ministry forget about all of these things just focus on yourself Lord make me trustworthy make me trustworthy Ah, 
Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? The next prayer point. Lord, every idol in my heart. Listen, allow me to say it first before you pray. Do you know what an idol is? It's something you cannot live without. Something that assumes the place of God. A job can be an idol. A wife can be an idol. A husband can be an idol. A boyfriend, a girlfriend, an uncle can be an idol. The government can be an idol. Revelation can be an idol. Bible study can be an idol. Even prayer can be an idol. When your attention leaves Jesus to prayer, idolatry is happening there subtly. You are more concerned about the motions than the contact with a real person. It's idolatry. Are we together? God wants to bless us. I came to pour my heart because I really want God to help us. Father, there are things in my life that it looks like I cannot do without them. Destroy that tendency in me. Whoever told you until your account is fat, you cannot sleep well. Who lied to you? Who made money such an idol? There are some of us, whether or not you need money, once there is nothing in your account, you can't sleep. Abba. Some of us will not be able to sleep because of marriage. When will the man come? When will the woman come? It's idolatry. I know you need a miracle in that regard. God will give it, but it's still idolatry. Lord, when will the ministry come? When will I start having ushers and peers around and God says, I watch your heart. Idolatry. Lord, when will the anointing on apostle come upon my life so that I will also make a name so that this will happen and God says, no way. You must be emptied of yourself. For the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Sing, Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you. To no other God but you, Lord. Lord, I will worship you. Lord, I will worship Nothing hands have made. Nothing hands have made. But you, Lord. I will lay down my idols. Come on, sing with me. And I will lay down my idols. And thrones I have made. And all that has made. My heart, sing, Lord, I will bow, Lord, I will bow to you, to no other God but you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Blessed is the man that God can find trustworthy blessed is the woman I'm telling you you have not seen what God can do in your life till he finds you worthy of trust you have not seen the kind of husband God can give until he finds you trustworthy you have not seen the kind of wife God can give until he finds you trustworthy you have not seen money you've not seen nothing I'm not talking business you have not seen suffering wealth until God can trust your heart You've not seen influence and anointing. You've not seen revelations yet until he can trust your heart. We are praying. Don't mind the time. God wants to deal with our life specifically. Please pray. Leave the miracles. They will happen in a moment. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. 
you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything use all of me all of me Lord Take all of me, hey. all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, use all of me, all of me, all of me. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything. You have everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me. Take all of me, 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 use all of me, you have my everything. One more prayer and then I'll begin to minister. One last prayer from the depth of your heart. Lord, dethrone everything that is above you in my life, no matter what it is. I dare you to pray that prayer. Dethrone it. Whatever has found its way to rise above you, dethrone it in my life. The quest for success, the appetite for influence, the pride of life, vain glory in accomplishments, dethrone it. That you be the Lord seated above and alone in a place guarded in my life by your jealousy take all of me it's all of me take all of me use all of me take all of me Shalakata prakata selega de balada balada bush. Shaka kapara kato sada brande gala kavya kato siada balada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that we have done the first things first, you can now pray and say, Father, now that I've given you my heart. Let everything that mocks you in my life bow to your name tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Everything. If it's sickness, let it go. Please pray. Lord, I have come tonight. Every oppression of darkness, let it give way right now. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'll be ministering will be very fast, very fast. It is very easy for the Holy Spirit to bring healing miracles deliverances to a life that is surrendered the problem is usually our hardness our hardness of heart makes it difficult difficult for god to find expression there are people gathered here under all kinds of strange influences carrying all kinds of devils one word i tell you is enough to set you free provided your heart is open it's not in the motions it's authority authority keep your hands lifted please just keep your hands lifted I'm just acting as the Lord is leading me 
the anointing of the spirits upon my life now now the lord is asking me to count five at the fifth count please bring all the people under the anointing at the fifth count at the fifth count jesus i give you praise one two my goodness three four get ready now five i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus inside and outside there is a reason why i ask you to bring them out the lord is bringing strange miracles to people right now over one outside i see mighty angelic activities there shabraketo salabaria kata mambre eteke deko salabar subrege de galabala rabosh shakatos kabarandas kadabrakatosia the authority of the king is in this place kalabaros sadabarakato shakres elekate bros kadabarakata barosia dabala daba ashabarakato sabria dabala dabala daba There is an anointing that is coming on these people this set of people this is not deliverance this is a there is an anointing there is a kind of wine there is a kind of oil that i'm seeing that is coming on this specific group of people it's a strange level of grace and wine you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient iron skin. Kadosh. Kadosh. Mighty on your throne. Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And weep Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Please lift your hands. I'm seeing written in the air revelation. The spirit of revelation. I don't know why God is starting this way. But I'm stretching my hands. There are people that are receiving a baptism of the spirit of revelation. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. At the count of three, let it be yours. One, two, three. Take it, it's yours. The spirit of revelation granted access to the deep things of the spirit access access receive it the gate is open the gate is open in the spirit access 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 to the depths of the spirit i give you eyes that see and ears that hear access to the deep things of the spirit mighty on your throne mighty on your throne mighty on your throne he is mighty in this place mighty in this place mighty in this place hallelujah now listen the lord is bringing deliverance to families and hear me this is the sign i'm seeing people burning physical fire on them is like altars on fire but physical individuals are becoming representatives of it in the name of jesus i stretch my hands right now that fire that brings deliverance at the count of three in the name of jesus i release it all over this place one two three let that fire fall right now let that fire fall right now i challenge thrones Dominions, the works of darkness. Hallelujah. I want to pray. There are spirits that are behind the undoing of many families. There are spirits that are behind many infirmities. There are spirits that are behind many predictable patterns. Are you ready for, for total freedom? Not partial freedom that you come back tomorrow. Lift your hands. Now you are ready to shout, Jesus, something is happening in this place. 
Listen, at the count of three, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. And in the name of Jesus, as you shout at the top of your voice, this family is under strange attack. This family, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare the foundation of evil in this family comes under judgment right now. In the name of Jesus, bring her out. Are you ready to shout? It's not a careless shout. Shout it with your might and your heart and you watch what happens to the gates of hell. Lord, I pray that the force is tying down families, tying down destinies, tying down breakthroughs in this year of signs and wonders. I pray that you arise, O God of Jeshurun, in the shout of your people. Let there be total deliverance. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two, three. Let there be deliverance right now. I cause devils. I cause spirits. I cause enchantments. Divination. Operations of witchcraft. All the overflows. Those following online. I place a sanction on the works of darkness. please lift your hands and pray you are here in this place and all you have seen in your life is closed doors closed doors closed doors i'm about to speak to you by the spirit closed doors the anointing for open doors is about to be released on certain people now lord where are they in the name that is above all names anyone here under the influence of any closed door i stretch my hands now take that grace take that grace for open doors take that grace take that grace take that grace please help them take that grace i open the doors doors of breakthrough doors of breakthrough doors of breakthrough hallelujah the Lord wants to end please listen we are flowing very fast for the sake of time listen for when your word comes there are families that are tied with patterns the same thing happens to everybody regardless of what geographic region they are almost graduating they catch you from malpractice then something else happens to someone then something else happened someone wants to get married after introduction there is problem another person has the same thing they are called patterns they are programmed by a covenant but tonight in the name that is above all names i decree and declare get set because fire is about to fall to break all kinds of patterns are you ready now at the count of three i want you to shout that name that is above all names and at the shout of that name every pattern in every family both for you and your loved ones connecting by faith that there be liberty are you ready one two three i break patterns be broken now patterns be broken now ordinances that cause repetition be broken now open up the gates shake it take it take it take it Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up, say, open up the gate? We're making a decree in the realm of the spirit. Open up the door. Will you open up the cage? Open up the cage. The cage. Open up the door. Hallelujah. 
goodness. Bring that lady. This lady you are holding. Come. Hold on. Don't worry. Just keep her. I'll come down. As I stood there, I saw a very strange kind of oppression in this lady's family. And if we leave her to sit down there, you will think she's free. But it's not over. In the name of Jesus, I curse the devil that is back of this tragedy. It's time for you to go. This is Koinonia, a place of God's presence and power. And I dislodge every force of darkness. Be gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ, forever, 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 forever. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three. I just want you to watch your screen. Just overflow three. I want to pray for you. The Lord is ministering something to me. The overflow in the building there. Overflow three. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. I see massive angelic activities happening there. Overflow three. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three. Let there be miracles right now. Let there be breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Stella. Stella. I'm hearing a name. Stella. 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 Jalako siara kato sabria kato siara. Brandus kalabos kadabaro kushi. Kalabos siara kato siara. Marotos Hold on. I want you to bring the lady that begins to laugh strangely by the spirit now. Here in this congregation now. Open up the gates. Open up the doors. Bring her. I want to prophesy. Because the Lord is saying that he's bringing your family into a season of strange laughter. This is the word of the Lord to this lady. I don't know what has happened in her family. This same grace is falling on certain people right now. As I'm speaking this same grace the Lord is opening doors of laughter to their families and many people will find out by the spirit in an uncontrollable way that grace the laughter is not just some sarcasm it is by the spirit in the name of Jesus I release that grace I release that grace I release that grace I release that grace what's your name Stella where are you from I want to pray for you I'm going to pray for everyone, but I want to pray. For, please hold her back for her. Come. I want to pray for you. There is witchcraft in your family, and I must pray seriously for you. I, I hear what I'm saying. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is a place where God is setting people free. That brother holding photos, you, the young man, look at him. Come. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, I end the plague of witchcraft right now in your family. I command by the Spirit of the Lord that everything that does not look like God in your family be uprooted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to lay hands on you. God is anointing you. I'm seeing an anointing like oil that is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying this anointing is bringing favor not just to you but your family. This is what the Lord is saying. He's bringing you to that realm, that dimension of favor. That dimension of favor. That dimension of favor. The Lord is bringing rest to your family. That's the word that I'm hearing. Rest. Rest to your family. Rest to your family. There is a gentleman as I'm laying hands on this lady. I'm seeing light leaving her and is looking for a gentleman somewhere. 
there is a gentleman that this same word is for the anointing of the spirit is coming upon him right now he's inside this auditorium let me have that gentleman now the anointing of the spirit of god is going to come upon a brother as i'm laying hands on this lady is by the spirit rest for you in the name of jesus rest and i cause the powers of darkness i'm seeing witchcraft in your family let me make contact with him bring him into a point of rest oh god take away hardship from the family in the name of jesus christ let hardship be gone forever in the name of jesus christ your family is going to experience breakthrough in the month of march the month of march is a breakthrough month for your family in the name of the lord jesus the lord is bringing breakthrough for your family by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus i don't know who this woman is madam can i talk to you please come quickly is this your first time here you've been here i want to pray for you I take away the spirit of death death hold my hands let it leave you in the name of Jesus the spirit of death I curse it by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus the spirit of death no one will bury you you will not bury anyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I'm seeing okay this is the gentleman let me see the photos who is this where is your mom's photo this is what I'm looking for where is she where is she she's in the house where is the house oh, an Ambra State an Ambra State yes sir I want to pray for you okay. so that you will not hear that your mother is survived by you people are you hearing what I'm saying yes I'm, I want to pray that's why I asked you to come with the people this is this is your mother's mother this is your grandmother this is what the spirit of god is tell me yes or no yes sir i'm saying this is your grandmother yes sir and the lord is showing me this photo and he's saying this was your mom yes sir when she was young yes sir is that true yes sir the lord is bringing is taking away death are you hearing what i'm saying yes sir because i'm seeing that the devil wants to attack the life of your mother but the reason why i held this photo is so that i will cancel death completely okay, sir. are you hearing what i'm saying yes sir forget about your personal desires god is going to meet that okay what good is your desire if you hear that your mom has just gone like that hold these photos father preserve the life of our mother in the name of jesus christ i come against death i lay my hands on this photo and i decree and declare that your mother lives strong and active in the name of jesus christ strong and active in the name of jesus strong and active in the name of jesus i'm seeing an employment letter in the sky this is what i'm seeing yes this is a letter of employment i'm seeing and i'm seeing it fall on i'm seeing a number written nine on it this is nine people nine people that this is happening to right now by the spirit i declare wherever they are nine people inside and outside let the anointing of the spirit touch those people now supernatural employment you cannot explain it is by the spirit i release the grace to make this happen they are scattered across nine people i'm going to pray generally for jobs but i'm just doing what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus receive it receive it wherever you are receive it regardless of the limitations i decree and i declare it becomes yours right now it becomes yours by the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ stella my sister's name is stella. stella your sister's name okay yes. come let me pray for you I may not be. whatever it is that she's trusting god for and i use you also as a point of contact in the name of jesus let there be a miracle for you the lord is taking away shame from her life this is what he's doing he's rolling away shame from her life in the name of jesus christ rolling away shame the lord is bringing speed you know you always hear me prophesy speed but many people just fall for nothing and stand up and they don't believe it speed is real where in such a short time you can do so much i want to pray that grace and i know it's going to come on specific people right now and then we're going to pray for the sick
and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel grace there is a grace for speed there is a grace for speed I'm going to pray be careful so that those who start running by the spirit don't don't interrupt anyone please be careful it doesn't mean you have to do that but I'm seeing that happening to people in a vision that grace is coming and you see them it's like they can't control themselves wherever they are oh God I stretch my hands now the grace for speed take that grace now grace for speed run like Elijah in the name of Jesus I command speed in your life I program speed in your destiny inside and outside everywhere in the name of Jesus let that grace come upon you let it come upon your career let it come upon your walk of faith speed 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 for your family speed for your career Is the way God restores he restores by bringing speed the same way what you would have done you could not do then he makes you do certain things that you are not supposed to do God is not done that grace is still coming on people this grace for speed I want to pray for the sick but I'm seeing that grace come on people that in one month the hand of God will so be stretched on your life and you will do things that will amaze you i stretch my hands may the right hand of god bring speed speed to people in the name of jesus speed to projects speed to family concerns speed to dreams and visions and goals in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we're going to pray for the sick will be very fast but just allow me do something strange that i'm seeing in the spirit i'm seeing the angels of the lord capture like an entity like a dark entity and put it on chains and is bringing it out and the lord is saying that this is what has been stopping the breakthrough of many families please listen listen for no man can come into a man's house and spoil that man except he binds the strong man this is what the lord is showing me in the vision and i'm about to pray this to happen now many of you will be surprised it may not concern you but you are standing for your family how many of you know we believe in family here you are not free if your family is not free let me tell you the truth so there's no room for selfishness to say i'm okay if your family is in captivity to sabotage your own success you will have untold battles from your very loved ones if all the brothers of Joseph equally had dreams they won't fight themselves but because only one person had a dream the rest fought him the spirit of the living God I'm seeing this entity I'm seeing it again it's, it's recurring like a vision and the Lord is asking me to prophesy and as I speak that word I'm seeing like arrows this is not for destruction this is bringing strange breakthrough to families in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I don't know who belongs to this category but inside outside online wherever you are in the name of Jesus at the count of three your family is ready to be free right now and God will give you a sign right now one two three I command that freedom I command that liberty now I command that liberty now I command that liberty now from every cause every yoke every spell every enchantment be free now from the north of Nigeria to the south 
the east and the west every locality represented in the name of Jesus be free I challenge every power every force I challenge every force every strong man that stands at the gate of every family to make sure there is no going out and there is no coming in he has tied the destiny of women the destiny of men the destiny of women release them now release them now release their destinies now in the name of Jesus I command every strong man by covenant who has tied any family let them go now many things are happening under this cloud God is bringing vengeance vengeance upon the wicked hallelujah Why is there breakthrough hanging? This is what I'm seeing like a hunger, keeping something like a garment, and then I'm seeing people naked and not clothed by that garment. It's a revelation. It should be yours, but something has kept it in the spirit. Right now, fire. I see fire coming on the hands of people. This is a reception in the realm of the spirit. I stretch my hands. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let that anointing release what is yours whatever has left heaven and is yet to enter your hand let it come into your hands now by the spirit of the living god let it come into your hands now by the spirit of the living god it's yours it's yours it's yours take it now in the name of jesus open up the gate Listen, I'm going to pray for the sick now, but I'm led to release a word of prophecy. Any family in trouble now, the Bible says, if you are not in trouble, don't worry. There are families in trouble that only God can set them free. He says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet where they preserve i want to send a word that will bail families out now in the name that is above all names i prophesy to any family in trouble whether financial trouble whether witchcraft whatever it is in the name of jesus come out of that trouble now come out of that challenge now i send prophecy like a sword into your family Come out of every predicament now. Come out of shame now. Come out of disappointment now. And every spirit that is joining the head of family members together. Quarrel. Brothers hating themselves. Sisters hating themselves. Either because of money or property or whatever it is i silence that devil right now in the name of jesus please be sensitive please be sensitive don't be careless at all be very spiritual the lord is showing me a plane that is taking someone outside this country i'm seeing a plane by the spirit this is what i'm seeing a plane rising and moving rising above buildings rising above fences i don't know if there are people here trusting god for that miracle but i release it now by the spirit of the living god i release it now i release it now i release it now i release it now, release it now by the anointing of the holy ghost 
hallelujah now listen listen very carefully we want to pray for the sick now listen i'll tell you why many people don't receive they don't expect to receive they expect to be prayed for but they don't expect to receive the standard procedure is to just pray for people at random and then those who are healed come out and we take testimonies but because we understand the kind of grace that god has put upon this ministry and we want to take out time to make sure people are touched at least i know that there are thousands of people but it's not too much to be ministered to we don't want anyone to go back it's a privilege that god has given us in this territory to carry his healing power and that's why we take out time to minister to people who are going to be very very fast i know that there are many of you who came here sick it's a miracle service it's not joke the testimonies you've been hearing are not stage managed god is about to do it again so i want you to be sensitive so we're going to do it very fast whilst that is happening please how many of you have written your prayer requests now i want to give you a chance for those who have not written your prayer request you'll be praying and then you'll be writing it down write your request call your loved ones and tell them god is at work god answers prayers in this place very quickly but those who are trusting god for healing miracles please overflow one two three main auditorium make your way now quickly make your way quickly to the front please quickly let's save time father in the name of jesus let this corporate grace work let there be miracles there are people with real conditions some terminal diseases you are the healer we are only channels for you to reach people and lord we step in your authority let there be miracles signs and wonders right now in the name of jesus god bless you guys we'll be very very fast the worship team will coordinate us please make sure that you are trusting god for miracles write your requests and then afterwards we're going to pray on the request in the name of jesus christ you're the god of wonders amazing god you're the god of miracles amazing god you're the god of wonders amazing god you're the god of miracles amazing you are the god Amazing God, Amazing God. You're, the God You're the God of miracles Amazing God You are the God of wonders, You're the God of wonders. Amazing God You are the God of miracles God of miracles, amazing God, you are the God of wonders, amazing God, you are the God of miracles, amazing God, you are the God of wonders, amazing God, you are the God of miracles. God. We must tremble out to your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Hey. Glory, glory, God, hallelujah. Everything within about you is great. Tremble out to your presence, say. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. You are a miracle working God. Your name is Yah. Oh, your name is Yah.
of the God of war, some wonders. I face it of your power. Oh, Nisha, Iyana, you have shown me so much mercy, much more than I deserve. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard the wonders. As we join to give you praise, the words you speak don't think around. Don't think around. Your arms stretch out. Has lifted me, Lord. You took them away. The chains and cords that held me back. The words you speak don't think around. The words you speak don't think around. Your arms reach out. me. You took them away. The chains and cords. You 
ministering in your your place don't worry you can be following the prayers while you stand those still ministering just just go ahead it's time to pray please if you are yet to submit your request just wave it and someone will pick it please quickly quickly if you are yet to submit your request why do we do this it's not a ritual brothers and sisters this is a mystery that God has given unto us you have heard of the strange testimonies these are some of the mysteries that happen in every miracle service where everybody's request can find expression here this is a representation of the pain the cry the impossible situation of men and women and i'm kneeling before the lord on behalf of his people to arise and do great things we have seen all kinds of testimonies you heard the testimonies this morning don't sit back there and be wondering will God do it no no you see the grace that answers to these prayers you see is a covenant are we together every man has a covenant with God not grace law no a mystery between you and God like a husband and his wife and God can bless you for the sake of another it's true it's true it's true Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord I want to pray a prayer and he's praying so this is not just some careless fetish thing no no not at all not at all we are people of spiritual intelligence I'm saying this because I want you to release your faith and believe nobody reads anybody's request here it is between you and God as soon as we're done here these requests are gone and they are burnt so next time you are writing requests don't say if I write this what if they read look at there are thousands of requests here who has time to read whatever is written there is a God that answers prayers there is a God that can wipe tears in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands towards me and I want you to just pray in the spirit.
the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare that over these requests my God and my Lord this is a representation of the pain of your people this is a representation of their struggles this is the representation of their difficulties this is the representation of the mountains that stand between them and their joy and their rest and their peace families are almost breaking because of the requests that are tabled here many people are losing their minds and losing their destinies and almost losing the faith lord i pray that you arise like the mighty god that you are visit everyone individually in the name of jesus visit every case individually in the name of jesus visit every individual in the name of jesus visit every family in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every request brought before this altar may my god arise in majesty and turn it to a testimony in the name of jesus christ lord in this year of signs and wonders begin to give your people tokens and signs let them know you have answered their prayers in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus the request you have written here no matter how impossible let this be the last time you will write it let this be the last time you will write it let this be the last time you will write it every human agent who can partner with god to make this request your testimony i call them into your life now whoever must die for this prayer to be answered in the name of jesus that they do not repent may the fire of god bring judgment on them whoever must lose sleep like nebuchadnezzar for this prayer to be answered let it be so for them whoever must have a revelation like abimelech to let you be May God give them that visitation. Whoever must exalt you like Joseph, in the name of Jesus, may God bring them to answer this. Whoever must favor you like Hadassah, Esther, may God compel them to do so for you. Lord, for many of these requests let it be by this time tomorrow let it be by this time tomorrow that your people will be rejoicing in glory in the name of jesus christ the same way i stand upon this request it will never rise above any one of you i stand upon it prophetically and i declare that it remains under your feet forever There are situations here that require creative miracles. May the God of heaven make it happen. There are issues here that require restoration. May the King of glory make it happen. There are requests here that represent divine connections. In the name of Jesus, may God make it happen. Whoever fights the answer to this request is fighting God and God will arise in his vengeance and judge them In the name of Jesus Christ Therefore we agree with the saints in heaven and the angels and we call this request done 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 In the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah listen these are the things we engage that bring the results you see 
if the devil tries to escape the prophetic word to you the request is there waiting for him it does it's impossible to come for the miracle service and not expect a miracle the system has been so designed that you must be visited if not by prophecy if not through the worship if not through the prayer if not by direct contact by this covenant practice here it's impossible for you to not experience signs and wonders now i want to pray for you this is the last thing we're going to do here a gentleman once asked me and said why do you say that the prophetic declarations over god's people is the most powerful part of the miracle service because to him it doesn't look like it there are people flying up and down under the anointing and that looks to him more charismatic and the revelations of the word of knowledge and prophecy and i told him i said you see all those things are revelatory they just reveal informations that most likely the person knows but this that is being uttered is creating realities it's not a suggestion son of man can these bones leave he said only down the west then he said prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound he didn't say somebody look for where the bones that means that you did not see the different bones did not mean they were not there they were just waiting for the word that will bring them together the same way you are here your blessing is in one state your breakthrough is in another place prophecy calls them like the bones the bones did not beg they just listened because everything has an ear so i want your heart to be open please believe it with all your heart believe this word in the name of jesus let me pray for you now In the name that is above all names i pray for you right from january that the kind of speed you have never seen in your life may that dimension of speed become your testimony from tonight in the name of jesus christ And they told Saul, he said, on your way going, you will see three men holding two loaves of bread. He said, they will all salute you and two of them will give you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. You know, one of my greatest desire, if you ask me, one of the greatest graces that I desire to come on people in this season is favor. many people think they know what favor is no believe me if you really have favor it will end suffering in your life regardless of the condition there is such a grace that can follow a man like a shadow people are rising as if they charm them to make sure you succeed in the name that is above all names from tonight walk experientially in the favor of God walk experientially in the favor of God walk experientially in the favor of God listen what your strength could not do for you what your education could not do what your experience could not do I compel favor to do it for you God is taking away every reproach and I prophesy it every embargo every reproach on anyone's life and destiny I roll it away now shake it take it take it I roll it away now I roll it away now hear me I don't know who has ignored you or the grace of God upon your life but I put an anointing upon you for recognition and honor 
I prophesy to your life a grace for recognition and honor. Receive it right now. I don't know what has died in your hand. It works for others until it gets to your turn. Right now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I command that nothing dies in your hands. Nothing fails in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your spiritual life many of you it's been a long time since you had a real encounter encounters with angels encounters of visions I release that unction for a strange dimension of deep encounters receive it in the name of Jesus open visions dreams receive it encounters from scripture let it be yours in the name of Jesus I pray for people whose prayer lives have gone down cold lukewarm you are not bad you just found out that your prayer life is like everything just disappeared you open your Bible you just keep looking at it you can't study in the name of Jesus I found the coals upon that prayer altar it comes back to life now it comes back to life now The spirit that causes men to sleep and slumber. They open their Bibles and sleep on it for hours. Mumble tongues for five minutes. I command that spirit to live your life forever. Let there be fire on your prayer altar. Let there be fire upon your prayer life. I pray for those whose passion for the word has disappeared no studying books no watching videos no spiritual development i declare may that passion be restored tonight every wrong individual in your life that is not adding to your life i take them out of your life now in the name of jesus christ everyone here looking for a job in the name of Jesus you will not get a job that will make you ashamed to say I'm working you will get a job with honor and dignity I pray for those who are students the kind of CGPA you have never seen in the name that is above all names let that become your testimony For those of you who have written exams and except God helps you, the truth is what you wrote is nonsense. Let the mercy of God bring corrections for you. Hallelujah. I still am led to pray for students. There are those here right now who don't even know where their school fees will come from. Truthfully speaking, no accommodation, no school fees no father no mother and some of them out of pressure are already being tempted of the devil to start getting into ways that would destroy them may the mystery that brought ravens for elijah bring your resources in the name of jesus christ two more prayer points and we're done I pray for your family members I don't know what has made you watch your parents cry as adult as they are a situation broke them down till they cried I declare that an end comes to that shame an end comes to that embarrassment in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you in the name of Jesus that by February miracle service may you be ten times greater than you are now ten times greater than you are now in the name of Jesus Christ listen I want you this month is almost ending please I want you to pay attention to every teaching we have some dangerous series we're about to start please 
I want you to open up your spirit and listen. These teachings are free for our own edification. If I were you, I would look forward to when this message will be uploaded and I will play it. Even if you are not concentrating, just let it run. Especially the prayer times and you receive it into your spirit. You have to engage the word. God is not a magician. Are we together? I bless you in the name of Jesus. You will not need to tell people you came here. God will arise and surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Now, aside from those under the anointing, please listen carefully. I'm about to make the altar call. Overflow one, two, three. Except for maybe if there are still people who are being prayed for. Please, no distractions. Let me make the altar call. It matters to us that souls are saved. It matters to me. It matters to this ministry. It matters to the God of all flesh that souls are saved. Not only that people are healed, delivered, set free, and transformed. It matters that souls are saved. There are people here right now who are saying, Man of God, I need to make my ways right with Jesus. You may be in here, the main auditorium, overflow one two three please no moving around let's respect the altar call please and please please and please no moving around let's let's listen i'm about to make that altar call wherever you are please i want you to boldly boldly make your way to the front you are you are committing your heart to jesus or you are rededicating your life whether you are inside you're outside wherever you are or some people here may be saying man of god i love jesus but truly i want to rededicate my life at one point i gave my heart to him wherever you are make your way to the front a gentleman is coming god bless you please rise up on your feet and come don't allow anybody look at you let's let's encourage them koinonia stand 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 please stand go ahead i believe there are so many people don't sit back no one will force you but be honest enough and be loving to your destiny by coming here to hand your life to Jesus. Please rush if you are coming. Let's honor them. They are coming. Let's appreciate them. They are still coming. There should be many more people. Please leave your seat quickly. Overflow 3, overflow 2, overflow 1. Those connecting online, watch for the prayers and then you pray along with us. And you can let our media team know that you have given your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the best decision that can ever happen to anybody. But because, I think maybe because it's not so charismatic and flamboyant, people downplay it. You can have all the healing, all the prosperity and everything in this life. Without Jesus Christ, not only are you going to hell, you will live a life of misery and failure in this life. I guarantee you. You may have money, you may have all of these things, but the peace that only comes from knowing Jesus, the rest, it says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come, make your way to Jesus. I want to appreciate all of you. Please, if you're coming, join them quickly. I'm about to lead them um, in the prayer of salvation. Young, old, join quickly. Lift your right hand and please say after me, truthfully, sincerely, you're not just reciting a poem Jesus is here say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you that you are the son of God you died for me you gave your life for my sins tonight I have heard your word and I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King you are my friend I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in return gentlemen make sure you join in the prayer we're almost done hallelujah oh they were coming from overflow three say Jesus my life is yours today and forever I declare that I am yours forever Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, as always, I present to you the ones you died for. A 33 year old man hung naked on the cross to prove his love for you. 
i hope that you're making this decision from the depth of your heart and sincerely so especially for those of you who came late it's not a poem we recite emotionally let this be a decision that is backed up by the responsibility to take the advantage of the grace that will be supplied to live a victorious christian life i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus i declare that the power of the flesh is broken over you no matter what your past has been the lord gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus from tonight you subscribe to a life of victory and glory ever forward never backward in the name of jesus you are blessed you are highly favored i declare that the life of god is yours forever in jesus name amen and amen thank you for making this great decision now um i want you to follow there's a gentleman waving his hands all of you will follow him they will lead you and there will be a group of people to just welcome you more warmly on our behalf and communicate a few details god bless you please follow the gentleman let's honor them honor them koinonia is this the best you can do hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain